broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Roll call. Carlson. Here. Vieira. Maniscalco. Here. Hertek. Goods. Miranda. Here. Citro. Yes, present. We have a physical quorum. Uh, Councilman Vieira will be joining us via Zoom, but he will be on in about 10 minutes. Can I have a... Move to open all public hearings. Second. One through nine. I have a motion made by Councilman Maniscalco. Excuse Second. me, seconded by Councilman Miranda. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, and these are non quasi judicial, so we don't have to swear anybody in except for the last one. That's right. Thank you very much. Agenda item number one, file number TA CPA 22 14. Mr. Chairman? Yes. I believe we have uh, some requests, uh, at least for number six, relative to a continuance. Is that correct? All right, let's clear out the agenda. Yes, thank you very much. Ms. Barr. I just want to state item number six is requesting a continuance that's TACPA 2220. They're requesting a continuance to April 13th, 2023. Um, the applicant is here if you have any questions. Applicant, are you here? Uh, John LaRocca, Murphy LaRocca Consulting Group. I'm the agent for the applicant. We're requesting a continuance to coincide with a rezoning that we're processing at this time that is scheduled at this point for April 13th and as you know plan amendment requests are typically running concurrent so we'd ask for a continuance to be considered at the same hearing date. So I'll move. Second. Is this your first continuance? Yes. Okay thank you very much. We have a motion. Excuse me. Is there anyone in the public that wishes to speak to this continuance only? The continuance <laughs> Only. Seeing none, we have a motion made by Councilman Miranda, seconded by Councilman Maniscalco. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? The motion passes. Thank you. Jennifer Malone again with your Planning Commission. Item number eight, TACPA 2223. We had originally requested a continuance to February 23rd. However, that date needs to be changed to March 23rd, 2023. This has to be heard by the Architectural Review Commission before it comes to council, and there's been some missed notices and rescheduling. So that, that is why we're, uh, the Planning Commission has requested a new date of March 23rd, 2023. And is the petitioner here? I do not believe so. What? <laughs> Mr. Shelby, do we, should I still ask for if there's anybody here to speak to continuance only? Sure, and that is again um, 501 time. Yes, and again, it, it cannot be heard until it's heard by the ARC. Yeah. Second. A motion made by Councilman Goods, seconded by Councilman Maniscalco. All in favor? Aye. Is there any opposed? Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you very much. Councilwoman Hurtak. Um, I believe there is a uh, request, and if not, I'm going to make one, uh, that um, number nine be heard first because uh, it is a... It's just one. I mean, the others are all comprehensive plan considerations so that staff could leave. If I just, okay. So it's, this is a request by staff? Oh, is there, we t yeah, I guess. Well, it was a request by me. Okay. So that staff can go home. You have a motion that it's made by second. <coughs> Mr. Uh, May I speak to that? Mr. Pre Mr. Pressman, uh, Mr. Pressman has got some, uh, has asked that his case be heard and yours is number one, correct? Y yes, sir. Because he has other pressing issues that he needs to leave here as soon as he possibly can. Okay. Kim, would you mind if we hear your request second? Sure. Thank you. I have a motion made Thank by you. Councilwoman Hertak, seconded by <coughs> Councilman Miranda. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. Into item one? Yes, we're going to go to item one. Okay. 
Mr. Chairman, just before we begin, just a quick question. Oh, excuse me, quick comment. Can you just make a motion to just waive the rules to allow for CMT for tonight's hearings? <laughs> I just want to make sure it's done. I have a motion made by Councilman Goose, seconded by Councilman Maniscalco. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Is there any opposed? Thank you. Motion passes. All right. Sam Thomas with your Planning Commission staff. This is TACPA 2214, located at 1112 West Waters Avenue. Some background on the request. It was privately initiated. It's small scale, and the request is to go from 0.39 acres, or is for 0.39 acres, and the request is to go from community mixed use 35 to community commercial 35. Here's the site located on our general locator map. It's in the University Planning District and the Lowry Park Central neighborhood. Additionally, the Transportation Planning Organization staff has identified this area in the non discrimination plan environmental justice map as an area of having high density of minority populations. Here's an aerial view of the subject site. You can see the subject site is located at North Newport Avenue and West Waters, um, West Waters Avenue. Um, along West Waters Avenue, um, the main land use is like commercial uses. Um, when you go north of West Waters Avenue or north, the north side of West Waters Avenue, there is a mix of some heavy commercial and with that light commercial. And then as you move north and south of um, West Waters Avenue, you can see that it quickly transitions to single family detached homes. Here is the subject site looking west along West Waters Avenue, and the subject site is on the left side of your frame. This is looking east along West Waters Avenue, and the subject site is on the right side of your frame. This is looking south from West Waters Avenue and North Newport Avenue. The subject site is on your left. This is looking northeast at the subject site um, from North Newport Avenue. And just to be clear, the subject site is the vacant lot. Um, the single family home is not included. Here is the adopted future land use map. Um, you can see along West Waters Avenue that the dominant future land use is community mixed use 35. And then as soon as you go north of Waters Avenue, it quickly transitions to the residential 10 designation, north and south for those residential detached single family homes. Here is the proposed future land use map. Um, you can see the site in red recognized under the community commercial 35 um, if this um, amendment is adopted. Um, so the impacts of this request, as you can see, the um, units and the square footage potential is the same. Um, the only change that this request would have is that it would introduce the consideration of commercial intensive um, uses on the subject site. Um, city staff did have an objection to this, and I do believe Frank, and, Frank Hall and Stephen Benson are here to speak on that, if you have questions. And um, the, planning the Planning Commission did find this consistent with two policies. Um, they um, noted that each mixed use corridor should be analyzed with the intent of being developed in harmony with adjacent neighborhoods and its character and or scale with the general look of the community in context with its culture and history. And based on those two policies, um, the Planning Commission recommend that the proposed map amendment be found consistent with the goals, objectives, and policies of the Tampa Comprehensive Plan. Um, that concludes my presentation and I'm available for any questions. Any questions for staff? Councilwoman Hurtak. Can you put that last one back up? Yes, ma'am. Uh, how, do, how, does, how, how do you see this fitting in with that? Um, this was the Planning Commission's finding, so I can't fully speak to what the Planning Commission's siding on with this. These are the policies that they cited when they found it consistent, and when I reread the transcript, they didn't really elaborate further on that. Um, but that is what the policies that the Planning Commission cited when they um, voted for this. Okay, thank you. Hmm? Any other questions? Yes. Councilman Goose. Let's go back to your, your map. Would you like the proposed or yeah, the, the, pink, the, pink, the pink versus the gold? Yes, sir. So I've got the proposed. Yep, right there, right there, right there. Okay. All right, we're proposed. All community 35. Okay. Okay. All right, thank you. Any other questions? Any other questions for staff? <coughs> Thank you for your time. Time for petitioner. Mr. Benson. 
City staff, that's usually where. Stephen Benson, City Planning. Um, staff did object to uh, to this item, and it was for a specific reason. So, the uh, the difference in CMU versus CC, it's it's very very limited. Um, the the CC and the CMU distinction correlates to the CG, the commercial general and the commercial intensive zoning districts in the code. That's why they're they're very similar. But the difference is that the commercial intensive allows for more intense commercial uses. And in the map um, that was presented, you can see that the pattern, which is everything is CMU. If you look at the zoning level, everything is CG. It doesn't have the, uh, the, the CI, the commercial intensive, on the south side of water. So staff objected based upon the fact that this would introduce, introduce the heavy commercial uses. Um, those uses include um, intense commercial uh, co and commercial and service uses, including Trade schools, air conditioned storage, automobile rental, printing and publishing, retail sales, truck and trailer rental, warehouse, warehouse and wholesale trade, vehicle sales and leasing, and vehicle repair major. Um, I think that major versus minor distinction is what is what um, is something that's different between the CG and the CI, and it also relates to the uh, land use, the CMU versus the CC, which is the request that's before you today. Um, Permitted activities uh, in terms of uh, special use permits include adult uses, temporary help agencies, utility transmission sites, blood donor centers. Um, those are what are permitted through a special use process in the CI. So that could come before you um, under that request if this were to rezone over to CI after this amendment, which it, which it would appear that's what's going to happen because that's the only difference between the two land use categories. Um, Accessory uses uh, under the CI include open storage and crematorium. So that could be another request as well, both of those uses. So that was the basis of staff's objection to this, to this request, is that there's no CI, and it would open up all those uses on the south side of Waters. Thank you. Any questions for staff? Petitioner? Good morning, or excuse me, good evening, Mr. Chairman and board members, Todd Pressman, 200. 2nd Avenue South, number 451 in St. Petersburg. If we could go to the PowerPoint, please. We are pleased to come forward with the Planning Commission recommendation of 7-0. They unanimously supported this request, as does the Planning Commission staff. The issue is seeking community mixed use to community commercial 35. Planning Commission staff tells you the proposed amendment will not result in a change in net density or intensity and the surrounding area is already characterized by a mix of uh, intensive uses, public, semi-public, and heavy commercial uses already located all along West Waters Avenue. They also tell you the surrounding area is characterized by a mix of light commercial and single family. So we're located on Waters Avenue, as you can see west of the interstate in Florida. This is a close-up of the site. And I've noted the site in yellow on one side, and you can see when you pull back a little bit further, there is plenty of CC35 in the immediate area. Another aerial site, you'll notice right next door, just on that surface, which I'm gonna expand upon, uh, an intensive trucking use that's there now. Uh, and this is a, a street view of that site abutting directly right next to us. Uh, this is directly across the street. There's a major auto repair, transmissions. That is a CI use. Uh, and when you look at the existing land uses, now this is not a zoning or, land, or future land use map, these are actual land uses. You begin to see that there's a wide variety of very intensive uses in the immediate area. The site is located, uh, dashed line, the word site in the square on the south side of Waters. You can see the reds, you can see the blues, those are all very intensive and CI uses that are in the area already. And this I'm highlighting for you, so you have auto repair, which is a heavy commercial, CI use, uh, automatic ice machine, one of those big ice machines that you pull up to, uh, that's a manufacturing use. Auto sales repair junkyard is directly across the street. CI use, heavy commercial use. Further to the right uh, are heavy industrial uses, boat and coat storage, uh, car storage, and shopping center. And to show you those photo by photo, these are some of the uses that I pointed out to you in the immediate vicinity of the area some of the uses that the staff was talking about. We're also required a buffer screen uh, under the zoning code of a 15-foot buffer to the rear 
with a masonry wall, shrubs, and ground cover. Again, that's required by code. And as you saw in the mappings, the site is no deeper than all the rest of the uh, commercial or heavy intensive zoning from Waters Avenue. Now this is an important distinction because your zoning staff talked about some intensive uses and with great respect they threw in special uses which you know come to you separately. I think, I think that's unfair to state those because those don't come forward unless you approve them. But when you look at CI uses that would be permitted on the site, because it's very small it excludes by code a lot of CI uses. So a dry cleaning plant large, that can't go there, it's too big. A small one is already permitted in CG, that's no different, it's zone CG now. Heliport, that's not gonna go there. A kennel large is permitted, but the site's too small to carry it. A small kennel is already permitted in CG, which the site is zoned already, no difference there. Maintenance of storage facility, those are quiet uses, storage, small, uh, low trips, low vehicles, no noise. Light manufacturing, I'm sorry, printing. Uh, in terms of a crematorium, that is absolutely not permitted at this site. There's a 500 foot buffer required from residential. This site is close to residential. That, that would not be a permitted use. Uh, vehicle major repair would be permitted. Minor is permitted already, but as you saw, it's very active throughout the uh, immediate area wholesale and uh, warehouse. So in regard to the request, the CI uses are hampered by the size of the site and are very close to the CG, which they are now, but would allow a few more additional uses which the applicant would very much like to have. We are located on West Waters Street. Uh, that has 28,000 or 38,000 vehicles per day. It's a very intensive arterial, uh, very busy, and this is located directly on that roadway. So in summary, what we're asking for is compatible with the area. That's why the Planning Commission staff found it consistent. That's why the Planning Commission found it consistent by 7-0 vote. Uh, and I'm not aware of any opposition uh, in regard to the request. Be happy to answer any questions you might have. Thank you. Any questions for the petitioner? Seeing none. Staff, are you going to make any Thank statements? You, Mr. Um, I would like to make two corrections for the record. Um, the Planning Commission did not find this unanimous or make a unanimous decision on this. The decision was um, five yes, three no, and two absent. And Planning Commission staff did not find this consistent. Planning Commission found this consistent. Or recommended consistency finding. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone? I see Mr. Benson getting up. Mr. Benson. Thank you, Council. Just to be clear, um, our report and I believe the Planning Commission's report is based upon what's adopted. So it doesn't reflect any uses that might exist that are not conforming to the zoning or not conforming to the future land use. You have a plan to identify what you want the area to be in the future, but that may not align with what's there today. So that might be the distinction that was presented. The existing land use, the existing uses in this area may not necessarily, necessarily align with what the zoning and with what the comp plan has set forth in this area. But um, that is, it's your discretion as to whether or not that should change. Mr. Goods, I see your hand is up. You're recognized. I'm glad you said that, because as I look at those photos, I'm familiar with West Waters Avenue. And it's all combobulated going up and down. And so I was, that's why I'm wondering how you're saying one thing, but we're looking at another here. OK, all right. Thank you, sir. Mr. Chairman, I do want to correct for the record. Um, the Planning Commission was 5-3. That was my error. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone in chambers who wishes to speak to agenda item number one, file number TA, CPA 22-14? Yes, hello. My name is Alvaro Gabaldon. <clears throat> I'm here speaking as a private citizen, a resident near the plan amendment before you. I wanted to make comment to support the staff report's finding of inconsistency. The comprehensive plan communicates a clear vision for protecting and maintaining the character of existing residential areas. This lot directly abuts a single family home. It further illustrates a clear future vision for the Waters Avenue corridor with a consistent block of CMU 35 running east to west. The CMU 35 along this corridor creates a future scenario where Waters Avenue can follow a mixed use development pattern. <clears throat> Uh, and can further connect the residential areas north and south of this of this lot to important 
key planning areas such as the dog track, Sulphur Springs um, Tower, water, uh, water Tower Park, and potential higher quality transit service north and south along Florida Ave or 275. Uh, the residential areas located north and south of this road would benefit from that consistent mixed use development pattern. As a resident of the area, I can share my personal experience and many people walk and bike along this very, very busy corridor. Um, a lot of the arguments before you have been that this area is, as Mr. Goods pointed out, um, kind of in transition. There's a mix of residential, there's local businesses, there's restaurants, there's a Montessori school, there's families walking on this road. Uh, so this decision that you make kind of sets the momentum for whether this corridor becomes better for the people that live around it or continues to, to follow this commercial intensive pattern. So as a resident, I wanted to point this out and highlight that this is kind of like another opportunity for you to clarify what Waters is. And just because it existingly is, has pockmarks of heavy industrial does not mean that you should saddle the residents of the area with continuing future development of, of uh, industrial, or sorry, commercial intensive uses. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else in chambers that wishes to speak to this? Do we have anyone online? Seeing none, rebuttal? Uh, yes, sir. Um, we sent out uh, about 36 separate certified registered uh, notice letters to the media neighborhood. We've had two huge yellow signs right on Waters Avenue. Um, and uh, respect the gentleman coming on down, uh, but um, we've done uh, a pretty intensive notice of neighbors and uh, just had the one gentleman come down, I think is quite frankly, not his comments, but supportive of the uh, proposal before you. Thank you. Second. Mr. Shelby. Yes, yeah, just a comment, council. Reminder with regard to this hearing and any of the uh, future land use um, uh, map amendments. Um, those are legislative matters. They are not quasi-judicial. And just so you know, that means it does not require competent substantial evidence. And deference is given to the um, board's decision. And it would be upheld if reasonable persons could differ as it's the propriety. So it's really a reasonable, excuse me, a, uh, um, a, a lesser standard than a quasi-judicial matter. Second. We have a motion to close by Councilman Maniscalco, seconded by Councilman Goods. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Councilman uh, Carlson. To move uh, file number TA CPA 22 14 ordinance being presented on first reading consideration ordinance amending the Imagine 2040 Tampa Comprehensive Plan future land use element, future land use map for the property located at 1112. West Waters Avenue from Community Mixed Use 35 CMU 35 to Community Commercial 35 CC 35, providing for appeal of all ordinances and conflict, providing for severability, providing effective date. Second. We have a motion made by Councilman Carlson, seconded by Councilman Maniscalco. Any further discussion? Councilwoman Hertak. Um, I'm actually really surprised because I thought this is um, something that, uh, as staff mentioned, um, is clearly not in harmony with what we're looking for this corridor to become. Just because it is something now doesn't mean it's always going to be that way. And if we don't want to have heavy commercial along this corridor in the future, this is the way that the city plans for that. Um, we heard from a resident who desperately does not want this to, be, to continue to be a heavy commercial corridor. Um, I think in doing this, we do change the entire look of that street. There is already some heavy commercial down the street, but we don't have to continue it down the street. So I will respectively be voting against this. Any other comments? Again, we have a motion made by Councilman Carlson, seconded by Councilman Maniscalco. Is Councilman Vieira <coughs> with us yet? Not yet, sir. Thank you very much. Roll call vote. Carlson? Yes. Goods? Yes. Vieira? Maniscalco? Yes. Miranda? Yes. Hertek? No. Cedro? Yes. 
Motion carried with <clears throat> her tech voting no. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, board member. And, and Vieira being absent at vote. Second reading and adoption will be held February 16, 2023 at 9.30 a.m. All right, now we are going to go to agenda item number nine, file number AB2, 22-21. Thank you, sir. Zain Hussein, Development Coordination, case AB2, 22-21. This is a request for a special use two for a small venue, beer, wine, and liquor consumption on premises and package sales off premises consumption at the location 1730 East 7th Avenue. I'll go ahead by first sharing the uh, aerial view of the property. As you see the property right here outlined in red, you see to the north you have East 8th Avenue, to the south you'll have East 6th Avenue, to the west you'll have North 17th Street, and to the east you'll have North 19th Street. The property is facing East 7th Avenue. Along East 7th Avenue you'll have a multitude of commercial establishments, restaurants, bars, clubs, and uh, entertainment type of establishments. The property is located in the YC1 zoning district. The property itself has a square footage of 1,951 square feet on the first floor where the AB sales will be located. I'll share the overhead view of the site plan. As you see the establishment right here. To the west of it, you have a cigar lounge. And then as I said, up and down the street, you have many um, entertainment and restaurants establishments. Excuse Parking me. is not required in the YC1 zoning. The proposed use here is for a bar with retail sales. And the site plan is showing that the operation and business will be consistent with the chapter 14 zoning standards. There is one waiver and that is section 27-132 and that's to reduce the required Oh, yes. Now we I, I apologize. We only had one quasi judicial. So, if anybody is going to be giving any type of testimony or making any type of statements in this agenda item number nine, file number <coughs> AB2-22-21, please rise to be sworn in at this time. Anyone giving any type of testimony or giving any statement? Please raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give is the truth and nothing but the truth? Yes. yes. Thank you, Mr. Hussein. Forgive my uh, interruption. No problem. Uh, shall I restart? Nope. No. Okay. All right. <laughs> All right. So you see the AB sales establishment or the request here, the site plan. Uh, there is one waiver, uh, section 27-132, as to reduce the required distance separation from 250 feet to zero feet from other AB sales establishments, which is that long ash cigars lounge to the west. I'll show the elevations provided by the applicant. Elevation to the north. And you see the back side of the establishment. To the east is a parking lot, and that's the establishment right there. And to the south, as you see, the establishment will be right here. As I went out and took pictures myself, I'll first show the as I'm in the parking lot on the north side, you'll see you have a uh, Irish pub right here to the north on 8th Street. Eighth Avenue, Zane? Eighth Avenue. Avenue, correct. Let me zoom out a little bit. 
As you see to the east, you'll have Carmine's, you have Gaspar's Grotto, you have Chill Bros Ice Cream, and other restaurant and uh, bar lounges. To the west, you'll have other bar establishments. You have a karaoke place here. You have the uh, cigar studio right here. And then also you have a Coyote Ugly bar uh, along there to the, uh, to the west. To the south, you have a cafe and uh, another couple of bars right here. <laughs> Directly adjacent to the property, you'll have this long ash cigar lounge. This is the back of the site. And this is the proposed establishment as is. Development review and compliance staff has reviewed the application and finds the application to be inconsistent with the land development code. And that is due to that one waiver uh, asking for separation. If approved by council, uh, the applicant must provide revisions to the revision sheet, which is within the staff report between first and second reading. I'm here for any questions. Any questions for uh, Mr. Hussain? Not, not a question, if I may. I know you said it inconsistent because of the closest to another alcohol beverage. Correct. But how would the rest of them zone that way then? Uh, the if there is now. a waiver for AB sales. Thank you very much. It is inconsistent, correct. Thank so. you. Any other questions? Thank you. I'm sorry, Mr. Gossip Goods. On that point, of view, I'm just curious, and maybe Stanley will look at that. You know, Ebo is a strip full of bars, and we keep going with this 250, so why are we keeping that in the code, and we know that's a bar strip? It's, it's, it doesn't make any sense to me. Uh, that's a very good point. I understand that. Um, it has been the precedent. If it has one waiver, it's automatically going to be inconsistent. I, I'm sure I can talk to uh, my internal staff. And um, if that needs to be changed, yeah, like a rezoning or is, you know rezoning, good. we can uh, we can discuss that. Thank you, Zane. Of course. Any other questions? Thank you, Petitioner. Good evening, Council. Michael DeMeo here on behalf of the applicant, Unica B Geo's Fine Wine and Champagne. Um, 1730 East 7th Avenue, 33605, located in Ybor City. I've brought the cone owner, Travis Horn, and a local <laughs> business owner, Gio Fucarino, to answer any technical questions if the council has them. As to the corrections that staff noted in the staff report, those have already been made and submitted to Acela. Um, I don't know if staff has viewed them yet. Having said that, if they will be done by the second reading. Um, just as some background to the business, Geo's Fine Wine and Champagne proposes to bring an opportunity currently unavailable to the residents and tourists of Ybor City, which is the import and enjoyment of exclusive champagne from different regions around the world. As to the distance requirement, uh, this will not affect other AB2 establishments and will provide a new source of revenue, so we hope Council grants it. Thank you. Any questions? Excuse me, sir. Is there any questions for the petitioner? Can you please read the name of the establishment off again? Geo's Fine Wine and Champagne. Fine Wine and Champagne. What's the reason for the package sales? Are, do you have your own label of champagnes that you're, that you're going to sell? And that is why I had our co-owner sworn in to give this sort of testimony in case the question came up. Would you mind if I have him come and answer Whoever such questions? Whoever wants to answer my questions, I greatly appreciate it. Thank you, Councilman. That's a fair question. I traveled to France recently as sort of an ambassador from Tampa to broker some deals on some fine champagne and um, have secured some deals Here's from some... Name, please. Oh, I'm sorry. My apologies. Travis Horn. 
And you have been sworn in? I have been sworn in, co-owner co and founder of, of Geo's Fine Wine and Champagne. And so we have some opportunities to, again, as, as uh, Michael mentioned, to provide some, some champagnes that uh, tourists and, and locals cannot get at some of the big box stores like uh, Total Wine, ABC, and we want to be able to just offer them that. It's not like we're not going to be selling, you know, glasses of champagne out the window or anything like that or, or um, packaging, um, you know, cheap wine. So it, it would be something that we would package up and they would take home. It's, I, I understand, but you must understand what we have to look out also. And I'm not wishing any ill will on anybody's business. But if for some reason this business is to be sold and sold to the next person, then they can come in and sell Coors Light and schmear it off. <clears throat> we have a 16 it's not, year. It's not a fine, it's no longer right. a fine champagne right. establishment. We have a 16 year lease that we're committed to, to fulfilling. We've already been paying on the lease since last February. So and we haven't yet to, to draw a dollar out of it. And we would certainly like to start selling some fine wine and, and champagne. And again, there. I'm not questioning. It's yeah. just things happen to everybody. Yeah. Anything yeah. can happen. And, you know, my, I love you more, and I just want to see it go up. Right. Any other questions? No. Any other comments? No. Thank, Thank you. you. Appreciate you all's time. Is there anybody in chambers that wishes to speak to agenda item number nine, which is file number AB2-22-21? We're close. We're close. Second. Do we have anybody online? Thank you very much. We have a motion made by Councilman Good, seconded by Councilman Miranda. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Councilman Maniscalco. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chairman. I have an ordinance being presented for first reading consideration. An ordinance approving a special use permit SU2 for alcoholic beverage sales, small venue consumption on premises, and package sales off premises consumption and making lawful the sale of beverage, beverages, regardless of alcoholic content, beer, wine, and liquor, at or from that certain lot, plot, or tract of land located at 1730 East 7th Avenue, as more particularly described in Section 2, providing that all ordinances or parts of ordinances in conflict are repealed, providing an effective date. Second. A motion made by Councilman Mascaco, seconded by Councilman Goods. Any further discussion? Usually, I am very hesitant very, very hesitant at package sales. Just because people want to drink 24 seven, I just have this thing about where they can buy. Um, I hope your plan succeeds. Let's have roll call vote. Carlson? Yes. Goods? Yes. Vieira? Maniscalco? Yes. Miranda? Yes. Hertek? Yes. Citro? Yes. Motion carried unanimously with Vieira being absent at vote. Second reading and adoption will be held on February 16, 2023 at 9.30 a.m. Thank you. Agenda item number two, file number TACPA 22-16. Commission staff. This is TA CPA 22 twist 16, located at 610 West North Bay Street. Just a quick background the amendment was privately initiated, small scale, and the site is approximately 0.71 acres. And the request is to go from residential 10 to residential 20. Okay. Um, future land use designation. The request was changed to R20 during the Planning Commission public hearing on November 7th, 2022. The Planning Commission recommended the change to R20. The applicant agreed to reduce the request to R20 at that meeting, and the Planning Commission voted on the request of R20. This is the general location map. The subject site is right here. It's located in the Central Tampa Planning District the Seminole Heights Urban Village, and the South Seminole Heights neighborhood. 
here's an aerial of the subject site and the surrounding area. You can see the subject site outlined in red. The subject site is bound by North Boulevard and West North Bay Stream. West Dr. Martin Luther King Boulevard is further to the south of the site. The area around the site consists of commercial uses along Martin Luther King and to the west, north, and east of the subject site are single family detached homes. This is facing west along North Bay Street. The subject site is to the left. Mm -hmm. This is looking at the subject site facing south along West North Bay Street. This is facing north along North Boulevard. The subject site is behind on the right. This is looking at the subject site facing south at the corner of West North Bay Street and North Boulevard. This is the adopted future land use map. As you can see, the subject site is here, represented by the black outline and the orange color, which is the residential 10. The CMU 35 the, is along West Martin Luther King, and you can see the residential 10 to the west, the west, north, and east, and further to the north is the residential 10, residential 20 designation. This is the proposed future land use map. Again, the subject site is here, and it's outlined with the residential 20 designation. The potential impacts you see before you are for the original request of residential 35. We do not file a new staff report with the reduction of the request, but with the potential, the residential 20 would be slightly less than both the, the numbers you see in front of you. The city of Tampa did have an objection to the original request of R35. And just as a reminder, we do not file a new staff report, nor do we send it out for agency review again. The Planning Commission found the request consistent with multiple aspects of the comprehensive plan. The comprehensive plan has policy direction that seeks to protect existing residential areas while balancing the need for new development to be compatible with the neighborhood. The comprehensive plan promotes a development pattern consistent with the compact city form strategy, which encourages higher residential density near goods and services within proximity to transit and employment services. And the comprehensive plan also seeks to direct the greatest show, share of growth to the urban villages. Mm -hmm. With that in mind, the Planning Commission recommends that the proposed map amendment be found consistent with the goals, objectives, and policies of the Tampa Comprehensive Plan. This concludes my presentation. If you have any questions. Any questions for staff? Stephen Benson, City Planning. I just wanted to provide some additional context. We didn't review this again um, based upon the R20, so our report is based upon the R35. But the comp plan does establish a basis of review. So there's certain criteria that we have to enumerate in our report. Um, that is something that the plan uh, uh, says should be considered by city council. And as part of that, um, we uh, did calculate the density for the R20, which would be 13 units on, on this site as of right, or 18 units with the bonus provision met, which would, of course, come back, come back before you as a PD. Uh, there is a PD already on the site that was approved uh, from the 2004 rezoning cycle uh, for seven single-family attached units. That, however, is beyond the five-year period where they can stick to their plan even if the code changes. So um, they would have to come back in to do the seven units and make sure that they comply with the current code. Um, we don't know if, if they do or not. It just depends on what they want to propose. But chances are they're going to have to come back with another PD anyway to develop what's already been approved because it's so old. Um, but that is 13 units uh, for the R20, and um, uh, our objection uh, would still stand based upon the policies that um, were already presented. Thank you. Any questions for staff? Petitioner. Can, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Shelby. Yes, Martin Shelby, City Council Attorney. Um, it was brought to my attention that something was received um, in Tampa City Council's mailbox 
and it was placed into a, uh, incorrectly or inadvertently into another uh, case um, uh, that's on tonight's agenda. But uh, what I'd like to do is I'd like to place that into the record for this case. And sir, this is what yes. was received, so you could have a copy of it so you'd be able to see it and address it if you feel the need to. Okay. Certainly. Appreciate that. I, I'll, I'll look at it and then address it in rebuttal if necessary. For the record, my name is Stephen Thompson. I'm an attorney with the law firm of Nadine Thompson. I, I do yeah. apologize. Oh, I'm Did, sorry. Mr. Shelby? Yes. I, I'm, I'm sorry. I think we need some clarification on what just happened. What just happened was that something came into Tampa City Council to your mailbox relative right. during, in the course of, and I don't have, may I have it? I'll just refer it to you. Unless council wishes to see it, I'll, uh, I could make copies of it, but it came in um, today at 10 a.m. and I don't believe it was sent into the quasi box or it didn't make it into the, it was an, uh, not, because this is not quasi-judicial, again, this is legislative. Can you make, co can you make copies of it and while, while the petitioner is giving his uh, presentation, you can then give it to us afterwards? Absolutely. I mean, after you've made the copies. Thank you. I appreciate that. For the record, again, my name is Stephen Thompson. I'm an attorney with the law firm of Nashby Thompson, and I represent the applicant. Um, the staff really made an excellent presentation. We're in agreement with, with the staff report and the re recommendations. Again, as you heard, we initially made a proposal for the R35, but after hearing some of the comments and the concerns, certainly by the city planning staff and the residents, we agreed to the R20, and that was approved by the Planning Commission. Um, the R20 classification is consistent at, with the comprehensive plan and also compatible with this area. Uh, the staff report cites uh, many policies in the comprehensive plan that really support this request. I think one of the most important ones is that the comprehensive plan recognizes that the city of Tampa is growing. Um, and there is a need to plan for that growth. Uh, your comprehensive plan certainly encourages growth uh, in the urban villages. This property is located within an urban village and is appropriate for the additional growth and development. And we're really not talking about significant growth. We're not talking about, you know, multifamily. We're talking about really low intensity growth, and I think I'm gonna have the, my client, the developer, talk a little bit about what the plans may include. Uh, but again, what we're seeking to do is provide adequate uh, plan property to meet Tampa's growth in the future. Um, one of the policies that the uh, City of Tampa Comprehensive Plan is seeks to encourage new um, housing on vacant properties. And again, for, the, for your information, this property has been vacant for 30 years. Uh, the last plan that was approved for this property was back in 1989. And there certainly hasn't been any development since that. It's currently vacant. Uh, your your uh, plan also encourages the development of infill properties. This is an infill property and certainly underutilized properties. Being vacant for 30 years certainly indicates that this property has been um, underutilized. This meets the criteria uh, of your comprehensive plan. Uh, both the Planning Commission staff and the City staff um, determined this request to be consistent with the R20 um, planning classification. Uh, the Planning Commission actually approved the R20 unanimously, um, but again, you know, with a, a comprehensive plan process, this doesn't give us any development rights. And I think that's important. Uh, really, this is the beginning of the development process. What we're going to be doing is coming back with a plan development, a plan, and we're going to meet with the community, we're going to meet with the planning department, and come back with a plan that is consistent with the area and consistent with the policies contained in your comprehensive plan. But again, I think it's important that, again, your, your approval, if you approve it tonight, this doesn't give the applicant any authorization to move forward. This is really the beginning of the process. And we're committed to working in conjunction with the community and the planning staff to come back to you. Ultimately, you're gonna make a decision about the plan, but we need to get move forward with getting the comprehensive plan so we can 
begin that process. I'm going to have the developer just come up and talk a little bit about some of his ideas uh, for this property. Sir, thank you very much. Councilman Goose. Yes, sir. This is for staff. I'm, I'm, I'm confused. I think we had a situation like this before. Last week. And I don't understand why we keep letting them come here when obviously there's an issue. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm confused here. I thought we discussed that last time. General, Ms. Malone? Sure. Jennifer Malone, Planning Commission staff. Um, so the Planning Commission did, this is a little different than the case that I believe you're referring to a couple weeks ago. Because in this case, at the hearing, the Planning Commission voted on the residential 20. So they, you do have a consistency finding in front of you for the residential 20. The applicant did not amend the request after the Planning Commission. They amended it at the Planning Commission hearing, agreed to the residential 20, and that's what was voted on. Yeah, but I don't see residential 20 at all in this. Uh, if I'm number exactly. two, we're number two, correct? I see R10 and R35. So Susan Johnson Velez will speak to that. I believe there's a substitute ordinance for you that is reflecting the residential 20. But if you look in your resolution, which is in the packet, it does state what happened at the planning commission hearing that after the testimony, the applicant reduced the request to residential 20. So that resolution is reflected for the residential 20. Ms. Velez? I, 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 I didn't see this. I'm sorry. It was on his mother papers here, but Susan Johnson uh, Velez, Legal Department. There, there is a substitute ordinance that I did distribute to City Council. If it was your pleasure, I didn't want to presuppose your action, so I didn't get up beforehand. But there is a substitute ordinance if you decide to move this forward. Councilman Miranda. Th thank you, Chairman. I'm uh, last last time we had one of these. It was something the Planning Commission had rejected, something at 80-something, 80 83, and they brought it down to 50. But the Planning Commission never saw the one at, or never, never voiced their, their opinion on the one that was 50. Uh, however, in this case, I believe Mr. Benson muffled out, muffling out saying, we would have voted the same way if it was R35 or R20. Am I correct, Mr. Benson? Could you have him on, if well, you could answer on the record, that would be good. I, I just want it on the I'd record that. because yeah. I don't want to get no. and, and, and uh, th this. I, I believe the question is for Mr. Mr. Benson. Benson. I need you to come to the microphone, please. So to be clear, we did not review for the R20. We know but who you are. Please give us your name. Stephen right. Benson, City Planning. We did not review for the R20. What the plan says is if you ask for a category that's more than one bump up, like if you ask for one that's two bumps up, like this one, we have to identify what that interim category is and tell you what the density is and offer it as an alternative. That was written in our staff report, and so at the Planning Commission board meeting, the applicant at the meeting asked the Planning Commission to consider that interim category. That's how it was different from the other case. Jennifer Malone, Planning Commission. In other words, <coughs> you went from R what is it R ten to but you didn't go at thirty. You look at the thirty five. When you go to thirty five, you also reviewed in essence the R twenty. Because it's required in the plan for us to tell two you up. what that interim density uh, would when you be. You two up. I caught on. Right. Yes, sir. All right. Thank you very much. Jennifer yeah. Malone, Planning Commission staff. That that the same logic follows for the Planning Commission staff report. That's why the Planning Commission staff report doesn't change either on this request. Yes. Um, Mr. Benson, stay right where you are, uh, because um, the petitioner said that you found it consistent, but you told us that you found it inconsistent. Can you please clarify that? So to be, to be clear, we don't, uh, your city staff does not issue the consistency finding. We just offer objections. That would be the planning commission to, do, to okay. do that. Our objection was based upon the R35, but we identified the R20 as an alternative in our staff report. So but we did not mean? review the R20. So, Neither so us not, nor the planning commission okay. did. Correct. So yeah, we're, we're right back where we were last week. Charlie Thomas, petitioner, I just want to add something. Staff recommended um, R20 in their report. It says staff recommends an R20 future land use category. And that's from City of Tampa Sir, staff. please state your name for the record. Charlie Thomas, sir. Thank you. And are you a petitioner? Yes, One sir. One of the petitioners. Thank yes, you. Sir. Jennifer Malone, yeah. planning commission staff. The planning commission voted residential 20. The Planning Commission voted residential 20. Staff did not review residential 20, but the vote was for residential 20. So that is the difference between this case and the other case that was before you. 
because the, the planning commission as a body thought that the residential 20 was more appropriate. So you have a recommendation from that voting body of appointed officials for the residential 20. You did not have that on the other case that you're thinking of. City didn't okay. have that. Councilman Correct. Miranda, you're, you're recognized. No, I, I'm so going to go to Councilman But the city never, never passed judgment on the 20. I'll let Stephen Benson answer that. Yes, the analysis in the report. So what he showed you was at the bottom, the basis of review, but the analysis was based upon the R35. So all the policies we cited, the de everything, but your plan says if there's an interim category, you have to offer it as an alternative, and that's what was offered in the stack. But I'm looking at the legal dots in my mind saying, watch out. Yeah. Again, Charlie Thomas. Um, I, I will recognize you. Are you finished, Councilman Miranda? Yes, sir. Mr. Benson. Councilman Gooch, you are recognized. I understand you're critiquing the number, but what still lies is staff in concurrence with the planning commission with the R20. Our analysis was based upon the R35. So we would have to do, we would have to reanalyze it based upon the R20 and compare it to the policies and, and circulate it for review from all the different departments. The, the departments reviewed R35. Everybody reviewed R35. Mr. Miranda showed me a document here that same thing the gentleman said that you were recommending as an, as an alternative right. to the R35, okay, sure. yes. All right, so, so it means you're so, for it. If you're recommending it as an alternative, that means the city has no objections to it, correct? Well. The, the basis of review for the plan says that we have to recommend an alternative if it was in the middle. So the recommendation is not the recommendation for the staff report. The recommendation is if city council believes the R10 is not appropriate and wants another option, that's what the R20 is. I got it. And I apologize if that well, was unclear in the staff report. Right. That puts us in a position of, like, of, of chaos. Like, where, where we, are we going here? So, we, we did not have the luxury of re, being able to re-review based upon the R20, based upon how it went through the process. So thank that's you. just to be clear. Councilman Hurtak, I saw you go for your button. I'm good. Yeah. All right. Is Council confident we can hear this? Yes. yes. Are we sure? Do we need any more discussion? Or do I, I want a motion for it to end discussion? So moved. Better get a legal they, opinion. They, have, they haven't finished the hearing. I, I, this, but this discussion. discussion motion to, by, by Councilman Carlson, seconded by Councilman Mascaco. All in favor? Aye. Petitioner. <laughs> Thank you. Please proceed. <laughs> Appreciate that. Uh, good afternoon, uh, Charlie Thomas uh, with the petitioner. Thank you for your time. It's just a history on the property. Um, this property has been vacant, as um, Stephen shared, three decades. Um, one of the original, you see the Elmo, one of the original site plans was for an Can you turn that away so we, in such a matter that, thank you yes, very sir. much. Um, dating back to 89 approved by the council was a commercial um, piece of property here um, our, our approach is to meet with staff and find what's consistent and meet with the neighborhood association and the, and the neighbors to find a plan that's appropriate um, we've worked with this uh, body prior to with another parcel in Seminole Heights that was um, vacant for 20 years also and so our approach to this, um, in concurrence with the Planning Commission, is that those vacant pieces of property that are in the um, urban centers that are located on a collected road, not a non-local road, and near transportation that, and that are underutilized, that we go and, and redevelop those. So our, our request would be today um, to find it consistent and that we are going to come back before this body on the PD process to come up with a plan that we work with the neighborhood association as we have in the past to come up with a, a product that they find acceptable. We've spoken with our neighbors. Um, we're currently not in full agreement. Um, they're seven and we're looking to increase the density to help meet the need that we have in the community. Um, we were, we joined a project on Nebraska um, that we brought before this board, Nebraska and um, MLK. Um, another corner there we put 13 units there and and our goal is to provide affordable housing and so the mix there is we have a school teacher from Hillsboro High School we have um, three sets of young professionals and then we have a set of college kids um, at UT who are there and that's what we do we find blighted property we come back we um, 
provide affordable, and affordable is relative today um, with prices going up, housing that's needed in the city. The, I just wanted to bring, we, we met with the city and, and we're okay. I, I would like, I would request approval today, um, but if not, we're okay. But I, I just want for clarity, the city recommended this. We spoke to city staff and city staff, the recommendation of the R20 is in their report that, that I, don't, I don't necessarily know that is that they have to offer alternative. They were rating it for this. They said we would recommend the R20, which was a point that we shared at the planning commission when we agreed to that because we're looking for agreement. If staff is in agreement, we're in agreement, we can work through this process. And that's the same commitment that we have to working with the neighborhood association as we have in the past to get this project um, completed and making this a useful piece. There would be no additional um, uh, pressure traffic put into the neighborhood um, because it's uh, about its North Boulevard and there's a, uh, a working alley behind the property. There's a similar situated property um, further west down the street where they have a property that faces um, North Bay and uses alley access for an, an ancillary structure. Um, we look forward to your support. If you have any questions, thank you. Any questions for the petitioner? <laughs> Councilman Vieira, let the record reflect that Councilman Vieira is with us. You are there, Councilman Vieira. Yes, I am, and sorry, I had some technological challenges getting on, but but I, I've been on for about 45 minutes, but yeah, I'm on. Thank you. Councilman Vieira, do you have any questions for the petitioner? No, sir. Thank you. No questions from other council members. Is there anyone in the audience in council chambers that wishes to speak to agenda item number two, file number TACPA 22-16? Yes. Her Harold Holder uh, with Bush Ross Law Firm, 1801 North Highland. And uh, I'm here on behalf of my clients who are at, at 4104 North Lynn Avenue which uh, if you see up on the screen, this is this, the subject site. Uh, this is their, their property here. Uh, for, for decades, there was a single family home on the subject site. And about 15 years ago, the developer replatted it. So there would be seven townhomes, which are shown here. Under the current density R10, those seven townhomes could be built. That would be a seven fold increase in, in the prior density and in all of the density in the surrounding Sem South Seminole Heights neighborhood. Uh, my clients and at least 167 of their neighbors, I have the petitions here that I'll tender today, oppose this request to double the density at this site. The, the surrounding neighborhood of, of South Seminole Heights is filled with single family homes. It, it borders the river, it, it borders MLK. On the frontage of MLK, there, there is some commercial use. On the frontage of Florida, which is the other border, there is some commercial use, but in, inside the neighborhood is all uh, uh, you know, it's about 12, 1,250 homes. And, and that's, this is from the, the city's website, the neighborhood guide. Doubling the future density, so would then allow for a, a tenfold increase in the density compared to the rest of the neighborhood. Uh, that, that should not and cannot happen for several reasons. First, there's procedural problems and, and due process issues. Uh, the, the, the main one being that this is the, the applicant's affidavit. The, a, a, the property owner in the affidavit is Paul Sierra, Sierra Commercial Holdings LLP, formerly known as North Bay Real Estate Holdings LLP. If you look at the property appraiser's website, they, they don't own that property. The property is owned by 610 Equity Group LLC. There's, there's been no authorization of the, the people that you've heard, heard from today to submit this application. They weren't authorized by the owner to be before the planning commission. It fails, it fails from day one because of that issue, and, and it, it can't go forward. But it also, it also fails on the merits. There's some other due process issues with the signage, things that were brought to the attention of the Planning Commission. They did the same thing with the signage where you would only see it if you turned the corner and, and were in the corner of the property. You wouldn't see it if you were driving down north to the park or going to the neighborhood. But certainly, uh, when the word got out, we, we, had, we collect, collected all these petitions. Uh, to, to, to address the merits, the plan, the plan criteria, this is from the staff report at page 60, talks about when you should amend the plan. 
and, and it, it talks about uh, this being a major policy decision. It, it should only be done when the thoughtful and adoption of the comprehensive plan that's already taken place is no longer appropriate. And it talks about how that can happen when there's a significant change uh, or an error in the plan, a significant change at the property or an error in the plan. There's, no, there's nothing before the, this body and there was nothing before the planning commission that suggests that. And you'll see uh, there is, there is uh, an area designated residential 20 to the north of here. That's already been developed as single family homes. They're being built now. They'll be there for years. So even this one area in the neighborhood that was designated as, as R20 is, is going to be single family homes. And so uh, the applicant has no good reason for this. It, 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 you've heard how the process was a mess. They asked for CMU 35 uh, in, the, in the initial application. They didn't get it. They went down to CM to R20, uh, R35 at the meeting, then to R20, and it's just this is not how the process should work. Thank you very much. I'd like to tender the the, the, the petitions. Mr. Shelby, can you make a statement on the petitions, please? Yes, with regard to petitions, just remember, council petitions in quasi-judicial matters are not. Competent substantial evidence, but competent substantial evidence does not apply to legislative matters. This is a fairly debatable standard, and I'm going to pass these around and then ask you to place them to the record. Can we accept those in the record, also the email that was given, provided to us, we will also ask then to? Yes, please. Thank you. Is anyone else wishing to speak at this time on, on agenda item number two, file number TACPA 22-16? Yes, there is. Please proceed, sir. Yeah. John Mowell, 4104 North Lynn Avenue, Tampa, Florida. I've lived within a block of this uh, applicant's uh, property for 70 years, so I'm pretty familiar with the area. And I'd like to, you to, he mentioned that there was a working alley between this property, 610, and the commercial property on, I call it Buffalo, but that changed the name to Martin Luther King. But I, I sometimes, sometimes call it myself. Buffalo, so sorry. Um, this is a picture of that alley that has served as a buffer for, since 1908, I'll have it here, if that, shows up good, which is, it goes all the way from North Boulevard to Lynn, and then it continues on down to Ola. And it is used by people walking, the dogs, and it's a public area that cars can drive on, and they do drive on to get access to Airbnbs that are on that alley, as well as to the law offices and the medical offices that are facing Martin Luther King. And this has served as a buffer from people who wanted to change the density up or down who were on Martin Luther King. Back in 1990, they approached us and said they wanted to build a parking lot on North Bay to accommodate a second story on a law office that was an MLK. And the city council at that time said, no way. You're not coming over into a residential area, which has been there for 100 years, and change it to something just to accommodate somebody on uh, Martin Luther King. Then, that, as you can see, it's a nice alley, nice walk. It, it separates the people from on MLK from the residential area that has been there for since 1908. Um, in this um, comprehensive guide, attachment E application, please note, though planning commission staff have, have reviewed the application for sufficiency statements or materials provided in the submittal or the applicant's own finding and have not been verified by the planning commission staff. They can say anything at all world. I mean, they can tell you that this is an arterial road, North Boulevard, it's 32 feet right away. The speed limit is 15 miles an hour, 
And there's two lanes that are designated for bicycles. I got behind a bicycle going five miles an hour the other day, and we crept along, but they have that right to do that. So I think that's kind of misleading, misleading to say that the traffic area around this would accommodate this higher density twice what they have been approved for. I could go on, but hopefully you'll say no to this application and perhaps somebody else will have a better reason than I do. All right, thank you. Thank you. Good evening, council members. My name is Teresa Goldberg. Um, I'm a resident of West North Bay. Have you been sworn in? No. Was anybody else sworn in? Oh, that's in? right. We don't need to in the end, non quasi. Thank you. You feel, have you had me sworn in? No, no, okay. you're fine, you're fine. All right, so I'd like to take an issue with uh, the city staff under their obligation to review a lower level land use from the R35 to the R20, as the developer, Charlie Thomas, came up here and stated that they approved that. That's not what happened here. There was a whole debate about that. Um, it was reviewed, it has not been approved, and it was not reviewed in its entirety by the city staff. So um, to come up here and say that it's approved by them is you know, just disingenuous. Um, as residents, and many are here tonight and many have signed petitions and been here in previous planning hearings for the Planning Commission, um, we are opposed to this because there is not the infrastructure to support the additional land use and densification of this one lot, right? Right now, we have a 14-foot, 6-inch street on West North Bay. It cannot support two-way traffic as is. We are one block off MLK, right? So people cut through to try and miss the traffic and everything. We do not have continuous sidewalks. We don't have sidewalks. So that's an issue. We have a significant pedestrian traffic. Personally, I walk over 10 miles a day up and down the streets in that neighborhood, okay? And I can tell you that there is a problem. And to increase the traffic to this area is crazy. It's just not supported by the current infrastructure. In addition, when you think about all the additional units you want to put there, right, where is the overflow parking? We don't have street parking. North Boulevard will not accommodate street parking. They are each single lane, two-way streets, West North Bay and North Boulevard. You do not have increased land use on these particular roads. You have it on MLK, which is four lanes across. You have commercial use and some residential use on those on that line, but it's four lanes across. We also, coupled with this current R20, right, we have the church lot, which was a church lot not used for the five years that I've lived there, but they're building 13 single family homes. You combine that with the additional, you know, population growth and unit growth on this one corner, which is less than a block away, you are going to drown this beautiful neighborhood. I understand urban. I lived in New York City for 50 years of my life before I moved here five years ago. I understand it. I understand what it is to park on a street, to parallel park, to look for parking. I get it. You don't understand what it's going to do to this neighborhood that cannot support it. You don't have one-way streets. You have two-way streets that cannot support two-way traffic. As of now, you look at a regular SUV, that's like six, you know, six feet across when people come and pass. You can't pass. There are no sidewalks for pedestrians. When you talk about Having additional land use and population, where is the sanitation going to go? Where is the infrastructure to support this in increased population growth? You don't have proper setback for sanitation. Where are they going to put their garbage? It's going to sit out on a residential street. We are single family homes. The church lot, which is much bigger, did not build a 20 story building. They built single family homes, commensurate with the rest of the neighborhood. In addition, the South Seminole Heights Civic Association is opposed to this and they had to leave and someone else will read their statement. Thank you. Hello everybody. Um, I was not expecting to read this, but you know, we jump in and do our part. I, uh, my name is Patrick Gore. I'm a 20 some odd year resident of South Seminole Heights, um, third generation Tampa. Um, I'm reading this on behalf of Emily Perkins. Um, the South Seminole Heights Civic Association was unable to be here, so I got a TLDR to read here, so bear with me. Um, hello, and so just bottom line up front, the Civic Association, I don't know who said it over here, opposes this, but we'll get to the long form here. Hello, Council. My name is Emily Perkins, and I am Vice President of South Seminole Heights Civic Association. 
Our president, Charlene Hartford, has an extended illness that prevented her from speaking in opposition this evening. Both of us oppose this change in land use designation for the property at West North Bay Street and North Boulevard and South Seminole Heights uh, of the Seminole Heights Overlay District. In the entire Seminole Heights Overlay District today, you will not find one R20 designation for 14 units on a lot size 0.71 acres or less, or any other 14 unit or larger complex, which is bordered by two regular narrow city streets. The only place you do find several multi-story R20 and larger designations throughout the Seminole Heights Overlay District are all developed to front one of our four lane state highways like Dr. Martin Luther King Boulevard, Florida Avenue, East Hillsborough, or Nebraska. Each of these developments border only one single city street. This proposed development does not meet that criteria. We wish to keep it this way for several reasons. These narrow two lane streets that border this property are not suited for additional traffic. West North Bay Street is only 17 feet wide and there's only sloppy dirt for curbing on the street, the minimum width. Even for rural road, the smallest described road in traffic planning is a minimum of 20 feet wide. In Seminole Heights, every case in which these multi-story apartment complexes has been built beside one city street has caused significant parking overflow and traffic problems on that street. The one complex we have in South Seminole Heights at North Florida Avenue in Giddens has caused ongoing parking problems that extend two full blocks from Florida Avenue over to Highlands. See pictures. Here's one of the pictures there and another one there. Since Armature Works was built, North Boulevard traffic has significantly increased it horribly and is used as a shortcut by Seminole Heights, Riverside Heights, and Tampa Heights to reach both Armature Works and South Tampa. There is no left uh, turn traffic signal on MLK and it would be required to reach this property when eastbound our community is not advocated. I'll give you 30 seconds more. Thank you, sir. Uh, to FDOT since 2016 to install this, but have repeatedly answered with a no. Most traffic turning down the speed, uh, uh, turning north, speed up down the narrow street, increasing density and making it more dangerous. South Seminole Heights boasts the highest historic home percentages in Seminole Heights Overlay District. 78% of our home of our homes are in South Seminole Heights, built between 1900 and 1959. We love our neighborhood and the charming aesthetic of our historic homes. We do not want to set dangerous precedent in your ruling and ruin the charm with our entire Seminole Heights Overlay District. If this land de uh, use designation changes approved, developers will seek to build additional multi-story apartment complexes that border two or three more smaller neighborhood streets. Ask yourself, would you want a 14 unit apartment complex built next to your house on your street? These are all residential streets. The examples given prior are specifically on commercial streets. Um, to put it simply, um, this is an apples and oranges sort of comparison that's being made to justify this building. Or as my mom would say, this is, you know, arroz con mango. This is all mixed up. I mean, mango was right. <laughs> yes, sir. Thank you. And Thank petitioner, you. I will allow you the 30 seconds extra if needed in your rebuttal. <clears throat> Hello, I'm Megan Euchre, and I'm as well a resident in this neighborhood. I live at 4105 North Lynn, and I would just like to read an excerpt. In the event that City Council determines that the above criteria are not met, then City Council may have cause to deny the amendment. If City Council makes a determination that the existing land use classification is no longer in the best interest of the public, it may approve the amendment or direct the local planning agency to propose an alternative amendment to the existing land use classification. If a land use is changed based on this criteria, the property owner shall process through a site plan district and if provided for in the city's land development regulations shall meet the development performance incentive criteria unless the development is within an approved community planning area, adopted form-based code area, 
in which case a site planning plan zoning may not be required as provided for in the specific plan in the land development regulations. So it seems that the citizens of this area can just say no. Thank you. Hello, City Council, respectfully. Um, my name is uh, Bill Weiner. I'm a recent resident of this area. I've lived there two years. My house faces West North Bay Street, one block east of the proposed site. To back out of my driveway, I have to turn twice because the street is so narrow um, without hitting John's property behind it. It just simply doesn't support that kind of use you cannot i mean um, a delivery truck will come by and you can't get by the truck until he's done and moved his truck out of the way vehicles cannot pass each other on the road it's it's and to introduce volumes <coughs> of people coming back and forth cutting around the block to um, shortcut mlk and the traffic lights there would create a hazard for children and um, baby carriages that the neighbor, the residents walk down the street with no sidewalks. They're on the street walking their kids and families and, and dogs, and it's it's very difficult. It's um, and I, I would not even see the site from my house, but the traffic and the support of the infrastructure would be untenable. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, if there's if there's going to be any more. Yes, sir. Please come up to the podium. If there's going to be any more speakers, can you please form a line to my left? Yeah, this is going to be right. re real brief. I uh, need your name, please. Chris Statch. I live around the corner on, on uh, Clearfield. Uh, this whole thing is kind of, seems kind of ridiculous. It's got 20 units in there, and I, I, the thought in my brain was, okay, you're in a Super Bowl party. How many, how many extra p spaces, and there are none, where are the cars going to go? I mean, it's, it's kind of a little bit ridiculous. And, and then you get, you get stormwater runoff. You got, you know, it's, they're taking a 0.7 acres and putting, you know, basically blocking it off. There's, where's the water go? You know, now we've got all those issues. And, you know, the argument is like, give me a million dollars. Anybody up there want to give it? I'll take 500,000. You know, that's the argument of R35 to R20. I mean, it's, it's almost like, I don't know. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of perplexed by the argument. It's R10, but we're going to ask for R35, but give us R20. It just doesn't make any sense. And it, it, it just, like everyone else says, the area just can't support that kind of densification, you know. Six units? Yeah, okay, eight units maybe, but not 20. It doesn't make any sense. So, thank you. Thank you. I'm Jesus Urena. I'm a uh, resident of uh, 4109 Lynn Avenue, just around, around the corner from there. And uh, I'm here to oppose uh, the uh, land development as stated. And uh, I want to point out that in hearing their statement, they said that they reached out to the community, to the neighbors. I'm here to say they did not. They did not. I never heard of them for, from them asking us what, how we felt about it. So that was a little misleading on their part. Uh, we have new development in the neighborhood. The, 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 the lot is probably three times as big as that one. They're putting 13 houses on it. And that's a lot. She already approved for another section that they built four more houses or five more houses already. That's in addition to those 13. Now they want to add an, uh, an apartment complex right there. We cannot support it. We don't have the infrastructure. I invite you to come walk the neighborhood with us at any time. And you'll see the nightmare that we face every single day with traffic, no sidewalks, and to add more residents to the area, I understand that we need more uh, development, but that this is just not the right place to do it. Thank you. Thank you. And if I see no more speakers standing in line, then this woman will be the last speaker. 
Good evening. Good evening. Um, my name is Patricia Mall. I live at 4104 Lynn Avenue. Um, I have here the, the original plat and um, of, of the area that my husband's I don't know which way I need to That's move That's good, right like that. That my husband's grandmother and grandfather um, purchased in 1908 to build a house. And so we are a historical community. We've been there a long time. As one of the other people said, most of our houses are old houses. The developer, when he purchased the sign on the, the for sale sign said seven, seven uh, houses could be built. And so I, I think that for him to then decide, well, he could make more money so he could come before you and um, make, build more houses. Uh, my concern is that what this is, is the nose, the camel's nose in the um, tent. If you put, um, if you've been on North Boulevard south of Martin Luther King, you know that they're building and building and building apartments. And so my concern is that west of North Boulevard, there are a lot of houses that have very deep lots, and what will happen is that they will come back to you, come back to you and say, well, you have that apartment across from there, so let's just go on down until we get to the Korean church, and so then that whole thing will be apartments. And when the developer says he's wanting to build um, affordable housing, new houses in our area easily go for a million dollars now. And so I don't think any developer is going to come into this, to, this uh, to our community and decide that they're going to build affordable houses when they can build 700,000 and 800,000 and 900,000 a million dollar house. I would hope that you would help us to protect this historic neighborhood. And um, as Jesus said, um, they have not reached out to us and, and they, at the planning commission, they told us that they would they have not. Thank you very much. Thank you. Do we have any speak? Do we have any speakers online? Thank you. Rebuttal. Yep, uh, Charlie Thomas. Uh, thank you again for your time. I'm sorry I didn't have the opportunity to meet Mr. Jesus. I have spoken to my friend and his wife on several occasions. I've spoken to my neighbors on several occasions at their property. My partner has spoken to him at our subject property on the site. We've, I've talked with the other neighbors down the street. Um, and just to get clarity on, on our street between North Bay, between Lynn and um, North Boulevard, I think there's six new houses that have been built during this time period. The house directly across is new. There's a remodel house just... Um, East, and then there's two new construction houses as you go down the street. And if you work your way down North Boulevard, the development is coming. And so the the challenge is how do we balance the development? But as they spoke, as they speak, as you go down North Boulevard from MLK going north, I think every house except for maybe one or two on North Boulevard on the east side are brand new. It's changing. The neighborhood has changed. It has continued to change in housing and bringing um, the density that's needed in the neighborhood. Um, let me, to answer the ownership question, we purchased the property. We were under contract with Paul J. Sierra and then 610 Equity Group. We own 610 Equity Group. That was the chain 
of ownership. I wanted to bring clarity to that. So uh, the question is then, uh, and yes, sir. with regard to the issue that was raised, are you saying that you, you're not the authorized representative or you are actually we part are the, of you? Okay, okay. We were both. We were the authorized representative while we we're under contract and then we took ownership of the property. After the process, after we started the um, process. Okay. Are you the owner of the property? Yes, sir. Here. All right. Um, oh, let me, to clarify how we got to the CMU 35, when we first took this talk to city staff on the development side, there was a, a similar situated uh, property just north, just south of MLK that had come before you um, that is in the Tampa Heights overlay district, but it was all residential. And uh, the council turned that project down because it didn't have any commercial components. That's how we got to, um, when, we were talking with count, when we were talking with staff, said, you have a similar project of what you're proposing. This is what happened, and this is why it happened. That's how we got to the CMU 35. We were, um, because the R20 didn't allow for us to be able to use a commercial use if council saw that that was the direction that they wanted to go in. As we were going through the process, when we were at um, the Planning Commission, and that's when we were always amenable to R20. But that's where the um, RM35 came from. Appreciate that. Again, Stephen Thompson, uh, attorney for the applicant. A lot of the issues that were brought up by the opposition really are site plan issues and will be dealt with later in the process. Uh, and certainly I want to make the representation, we're not going to put multifamily uh, development on this property. Um, you know, the comprehensive plan is what should be guiding the council and the city. Uh, we have followed the plan. I mean, when we, when we met with the uh, planning department, we always said that, you know, what is appropriate, uh, you know, what is a consistent land use. And that's how we got to where we are right now. Based upon the policies in the comprehensive plan of the public hearing, your planning commission uh, unanimous, unanimously approved it, finding it in compliance with a comprehensive plan. Um, we're, we're also not asking for development at this point in time. We know we're going to have to go through that plan development process, and I'm going to make the representation, we are going to meet with the community. It's going to be a plan that's going to be discussed with the community. We're not going to come here without having that, that input. Um, but again, we're going to develop a site plan that's consistent with your comprehensive plan. We're going to work with the community and with your staff to come back and present this plan. We would request the approval so we can move this process forward. The other thing I would like to mention, this property has been vacant for 30 years. It's about time that we get some development on this property. Thank you. Any other further questions? Susan Johnson Velez, you're standing there. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chair. Susan Johnson Velez, Legal Department. Um, I do want to just mention, particularly because I, um, the applicant um, has said several times now that you know a lot of these issues will be dealt with at site plan, and when we do the rezoning, we come back with a specific plan for this property. So I just wanted to remind council, and you do have in the at the very last attachment F to the staff report from the Planning Commission, there's. Um, uh, three or four pages that talk about um, what, what's happening when you're adopting an amendment to the comprehensive plan and, and what that means. So I just want to read a little bit from that. Um, it says, an amendment to the future land use map in particular is a declaration that growth and development pattern initially sought by the city in a particular location through thoughtful adoption of the comprehensive plan is no longer appropriate. Um, and so part of what you're deciding is whether or not the R10 it, at this location is no longer appropriate. And if it if you believe it still is appropriate, then then you know you should let that guide your guide your decision on this application to to double the density. So and it also talks about um, the fact that amendments should not occur with the same frequency as parcel rezonings and their effect upon the entire comprehensive plan, including the practical consequences of the policy shift signified by the amendment should be considered. So, and I also want to remind council, you know, the property changes hands all the time. This particular piece of property changed hands 
while this application was being processed. So um, the you know statements that are made by the applicant in front of you um, shouldn't, I, I don't want to say shouldn't be taken as true. I'm sure they're true, but lots of things can happen with property in the interim between the time that you make the comprehensive plan change and the time that the property is ultimately developed. So the question before council is whether the R10 continues to be appropriate or whether a change in this area is a more appropriate um, designation. Can, can you or someone on staff um, confirm that the applicant is the owner of the property? I believe Ms. Malone has spoken to the, um, to the applicant and they are, I believe the, the gentleman that's here is a representative of both 610 and planning support. Yes, Jennifer Malone, Planning Commission staff. The applicant confirmed with me that, that he is the owner of the property, that of the 610 entity, and he's with the planning support services, which is on the affidavit. Any other comments or questions? Second. Motion to close by Councilman Carlson, seconded by Councilman Maniscalco. All in favor? Aye. What is the pleasure of Council? Councilwoman Hurtak. File number TA CPA 22 16, uh, denying an ordinance amending the imagined 2040 Second. Tampa Comprehensive Plan future land use element, future land use map for the property located at 610 West <laughs> North Bay Street, Street from residential 10 to residential 20. <laughs> right? I mean, we can't really, the conflict providing severability doesn't really matter, so stop right there. We have a motion made by Councilwoman Hurtak, seconded by Councilman Maniscalco. Any, f no, please go right ahead. If there is something you want to have in the record in support of the motion so that if it is ever an issue. Okay, I'm sorry, you told me that these were up and down so I didn't need no, to do they're that. Not, they're not up or down, but what I'm saying is it's a different standard. I'm, okay. I'm sorry no, for interrupting. No, I'm, I'm happy to add it. Um, that uh, that it it does not um, fit within the comprehensive plan, and it is not in, in harmon, harmony with the adjacent neighborhood, and and not in character or scale with the general um, community. We have a motion that has been made by Councilwoman Hurtak, seconded by Councilman Maniscalco. Any further discussion? Roll call vote. Goulds. Vieira? Yes. Maniscalco? Yes. Miranda? Yes. Hertek? Yes. Carlson? Yes. Citro? Yes. Motion failed. No. 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 Motion, yes. Motion passes. Motion passed. Passes. Yeah. Unanimously. Yes. Thank you. Agenda item number three, file number TA CPA 22 17. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'm sorry to interrupt. Just a, just a clarification with the clerk. That's the motion to deny, passed unanimously. Yes. Right. Thank you. Correct. Thank you. If we can enter, exit the chambers quietly, please. <laughs> Good evening, Council. Katrina Corcoran, Planning Commission staff. I'm here tonight to present the Tampa Comprehensive Plan Map Amendment 22-17, located at 701 East Line Baugh Avenue. Some background on this amendment is privately initiated, small scale, approximately 0.5 acres in size, and the request is to move from residential 10 to residential 20. The general location of this plan amendment is within the University Planning District. It's uh, within the North Tampa community neighborhood, and it is west of a transit emphasis corridor, uh, North Nebraska Ab uh, Avenue. The subject site is located here. You can see it in the uh, blue box. It is south of East Linebaugh Avenue, west of uh, North Nebraska Avenue, and east of Interstate I uh, 275. This shows the subject site at 701 East Linebaugh Avenue. This shows the subject site facing west toward Interstate 275. This uh, is facing west towards I-275, just north of the subject site. 
This is uh, Linebaugh Ave facing east, uh, again, north of the subject site. This is Linebaugh Ave facing north Florence Avenue, north of the subject site. This shows the adopted future land use map. Uh, the subject site is uh, surrounded by the dashed line. It is currently residential 10, and immediately to the south and north, you'll see uh, more residential 10. However, to the east and west of the subject site, a little further out, you will see residential 20, uh, community commercial 35, as well as uh, a plot of residential 35. This shows the subject site moving to residential 20. The existing uh, units allowed would be about five uh, with the potential for 10 with this change. Existing um, non-residential would be about 7,600 square feet uh, with that change being about 10,800 square feet of non-residential. So this would allow for an increase in de development potential allowing higher residential density and greater commercial intensity. Any non-residential uses must meet commercial locational criteria. City of Tampa staff did object to this uh, plan amendment and they're here to provide further comments on that. Planning Commission found uh, this amendment consistent with the following plan policies, uh, including creating housing opportunities, ideally utilizing underutilized land, uh, targeting growth areas served by employment opportunities and transit, and providing sensitive transitions and density. The Planning Commission recommends that the proposed map amendment be found consistent with the goals, objectives, and policies of the City of Tampa Comprehensive Plan. With that, I conclude my presentation. Open to any questions. Any questions? Councilman Goods? Yes, ma'am. Can you put the, uh, the map up, the uh, gold, red, and brown back again? Uh, with the proposed or the, the current future? Current. Values. The current land use. Current. The current. And the current land uses R10, correct? Yes. All right, thank you. <laughs> Any other questions? Thank you. Mr. Benson. Stephen Benson, City Planning Staff. Just to clarify staff's objection, the difference between the R10 and the R20 is R20 introduces multifamily uses. R10 only allows single family uses. So the form and the scale could be different and after this occurs, um, the available zoning districts under this classification would be RS60, RS50, but also residential multifamily 12, multifamily 16, multifamily 18, uh, as well as uh, the plan development based upon any of those different zoning districts. Thank you. Any other questions? Petitioner. Good evening, Council. Charlie Thomas. Um, we ask for your support on this project. Um, we uh, find it consistent with Planning Commission. I just wanted to bring clarity to uh, city staff's comment. The property is currently zoned multifamily, so it won't introduce any more multifamily because it's a multifamily property. It's a townhouse, I mean, a duplex currently. So it, it wouldn't be adding multifamily into the neighborhood because it currently exists as multifamily. I request your support. The, the, zoning, the zoning that we have is RS60, residential single family 60. So, mm -hmm. is there a misunderstanding here too? Petitioner? Yes, sir. well, it, it's currently a duplex. It's multifamily. So, okay. when you read their statement. There, there, it, is, there is a distinction. Mr. Benson. I, I'm not speaking to the existing use, but if the existing use doesn't conform to the RS60, which a duplex would not, then it's not conforming to the zoning. Thank you. What they, their statement is that it would introduce multifamily into the neighborhood. The multifamily has already existed in the neighborhood. It's already been a part of the neighborhood. So it, it, people are currently living there in a multifamily house. So it can't introduce multifamily into a property that's currently multifamily. It's, you can't do that. 
So they, they, maybe they change the word, but it can't introduce. According to Chapter 27, a duplex is not multifamily. It's single family attached. Councilwoman Hertog. Um, so on this piece of property, there are currently, uh, this is for Mr. Benson, currently two residences. Then, whether they're single family attached or. Um, Jennifer Malone, Planning Commission staff, we're going to pull up. It is two residences. Is it two residences? We'll pull up a. a uh, uh, do you have a site, a picture of the subject site? Yes. But we did a field visit, and it, it is two residences attached. Yes. Um, so you can kind of see it's hard to tell because we didn't want to walk onto the property. Okay. But there's uh, there's two doors there. Okay. So my question though is um, that currently, as it stands now, you could put five dwellings on the site. In the residential ten, yes, because it's a, it's a half acre. So those, um, but but the residential 10 only permits single family attached on the periphery of the neighborhoods through a planned development rezoning. So it wouldn't be by right, but, but okay. there is potential if planning commission staff um, thinks it's appropriate to find that request, we'd have to review it and it would come before you as a zoning. Okay. But, but, but in theory, what it's doing right now could, is five, okay. And then it could possibly be 10. Thank you. Thanks. Any other questions? Petitioner. Yes, sir. Did you want to finish? Yes, sir. So we've done what the city's asked. We go find unutilized pieces of property, add additional housing that's on the transit line that allows for increased density to provide housing. That's what we do. We work with staff. We find what works. It's on the artery. It's not in the neighborhood. All of the things that the Planning Commission said, the things that city staff, and, and I've talked with staff, and my only issue is they say introduce. I, if they say existing, I would be fine with the language. Um, but we believe this is consistent with the spirit and the intent of what we need to do to support housing in the area and in our city, and we su request your support. Any questions for the petitioner? Is there, Councilman Goods? You know, it, I don't know if it's a point of uh, interpretation or a point of not clarity for staff with the petitioner. And that's what I'm hearing today, and it doesn't seem clear that the petitioner is saying staff is telling him one thing, but staff is saying another. So I'm, I'm, to me, I don't know if it's interpretation, uh, 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 comprehension, or what have you, but some, there's some, some kind of disconnect here. And, and I see, you know, I'm looking at my sheet here, and I see three of these things coming back to back. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm seeing a, a pattern that we're maybe going down the wrong road here. So I... I, I <laughs> and I'm not telling the petitioner what to do, but I, I, to me, I think maybe the, uh, the petitioner needs to go back for more clarity before we decide on these other issues tonight. That's just not telling anybody what to do, but I think there's a point of uh, uh, not understanding uh, because it's been kind of confusing me, to me tonight. So I'm just saying, uh, I'm not telling the petitioner what to do, but I, I think that... Uh, there's a lack of communication and understanding on, on some parts there, and I think they need to be cleared up so you actually can know what you can do, what you can't, and understand what staff is telling you or if staff is not giving you the, the right direction to get the right direction. Uh, that's just my comments. Mr. Shelby. So just a question. Uh, I, I'm sorry if you could just, if you don't mind, what was staff's, did staff have an objection to this? Or I didn't quite, I didn't quite hear. I'm sorry. The objection from staff came from land development coordination. Uh, office and the objection was based upon what is currently allowed on the site. It does not, we do not say there's a non conforming use here and therefore it's consistent. It's based upon what's adopted. So even though the current use of the property may not be conforming to the zoning or the comp plan, we still have to look at the comp plan because that's what was already acted on by, by city council and that is what the city officially wants to see moving forward, not what the property might currently be used for. 
And if I can, to address Councilman Goods, I'm going to ask you to hearken back to what, what Ms. Johnson Velez said and is in your staff report as to the purpose of why, it explains why this is legislative and not quasi-judicial, as the courts have found it, because what you're in fact doing with these are making policy decisions as to the direction of what you want your future land use map to look like. Every time you change your future land use map, the future changes. So the question is a policy question based on um, uh, your determination of- And, and that's what I'm saying, Ms. Shelby. I, I, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm seeing this back to back to back, and I, I don't want people to come to us and be dejected when we don't approve something or approves it and not have clear understanding of why something may be voted down. And that's what I feel at this point, that I don't think the petitioner really is understanding. And now I'm giving you a clear statement of staff and saying the plan is the plan, which that's what I believe. But I don't think the petitioner understands because he's believing that you're telling him one thing, but it's believing another. And that's why I'm saying maybe this needs to go back because so the petitioner understand what really needs to happen. I'm not saying he doesn't know or doesn't know. I don't think from hearing tonight that there's a clear understanding of what the usage is for or what the plan is intended. Am I, am I kind of sense that, Mr. Mr. Benson? Um, thank you, Councilman Goods. Um, we will request a continuance and let us have time to meet with staff and come back to you with a, uh, a comprehensive plan and a site plan and bring it all together. Site plan is not no, no, not no just a comprehensive plan. Site plan is not, we don't need yes. a site plan. We need a site plan. What, I, what I'm suggesting is that I see one, two, or three of them. Yes, sir. And I don't think, believe you in, or, or, or in concert with staff to understand what that's comprehensive plan that you want changed, understanding what goes there, what should go there, and what the city is looking to be there. I, I appreciate you, you the I'm guidance. Saying? So, so and I, I would request I would, a continuance, I, yes, sir. I, I, would, I would, you know, and I'm not telling you what to do. No, sir. I but I just think you, you may need to go back for a little more clarity. And I just, yeah. Susan Johnson Velez, Legal Department, and I, you know, maybe either uh, Ms. Malone or Mr. Benson can confirm this, but the R20 is the next, the next right. step up in land use category. So there's nothing in between there to, to be a lesser request, if that's what the purpose of the continuance is. Right, so. That's not my purpose. Okay. My purpose is I. we're saying this is our plan, our policy. Right. I don't believe the gentleman, what he wants to do is, is it going to be in conformance to what we say we want there. And that's why I'm saying maybe he needs to go back to the drawing board with staff to make sure what is allowed, what isn't allowed, and what our plans for the city for that zoning is versus us trying to deny him maybe again and again and he not have a full understanding of what our plan is. It's only my rationale to it. I could be wrong, but I'm just, you know, I can see where this is going. May I ask a question? In, in, this, in this situation, you're being presented with from one category to the next category. And the question is, what do you anticipate a continuance would bring to council that would change what you have before you today. Because, because, because frankly, council, I, and, and certainly I can't speak to, to every hearing, but this council has made changes to the future land use map depending on the circumstances, depending on the trend, depending on what council sees where in whatever particular area the pattern of development is and, and makes a policy decision. So I'm just asking you, if there's a specific something to be gained by a continuance, then certainly that's in order. But I know that council has in the past been concerned about having continuances when it is not for a particular something that you anticipate I, Mr. happening. Mr. Shelby, I'm just saying for me, I believe it's necessary. This gentleman has three items on the, on, on, on the table, all with the same type of situation. And I don't think he clearly understands in my opinion of what, what's going on here. I think he needs to go back and get with staff to get a clear understanding of that. That's all I'm saying, okay. whether you agree or disagree with it. Back to Mr. Councilman uh, I, would, I don't know who these are, but I mean, I, I just marked these as I saw, number two, number three, number four, number five. <laughs> There's four of them that all go from R10 
to really, one said 35, he wanted 20, and there's, there's four of them that says R10 to R20, in essence, and there were really no, no leeways, either 10 or 20. There's not 20 and 15 and 20, there's 10 and 20, and that's it. Yes. So there's where the clarity comes in, that if it's there, it's a duplex, there's still two houses. Sure. Jennifer Malone, Planning Commission staff, that is correct. There is no next, the, the category is R10, the next category is R20. The applicant cannot ask for anything in between because it doesn't exist. I just want to remind you, though, that Planning Commission staff found this consistent and the Planning Commission found it consistent. So the consistency is on the record from the Planning Commission. The City of Tampa plan, uh, staff always reviews these and provides comments and objections, but the official recommendation from the Planning Commission is consistency for the Residential 20. Petitioner, at this point, what do you wish to do? Do you wish for this hearing to be continued, or are you still asking for a continuance? Give me one second. We, we would ask for the board to, to vote on it, and we believe that the Planning Commission has spoken to what the intent is for the city, what the city has told the, instructed the Planning Commission to do, and go say, hey, do you find this consistent with the growth patterns, with the housing needs, with those things to be addressed? And I think the Planning Commission has said yes to that. And unlike the previous case, there's no neighborhood objection, there isn't any of this, and it's, it meets the needs of what the city says that they want, and it's comprehensive. The city's objection is um, um, more um, zoning related to that technical, because it says this use predates the zoning. So yes, we don't think duplexes are appropriate, except that it's a duplex there, and it's a mix of that in the neighborhood. That is the neighborhood. The neighborhood is a transient neighborhood. If you look to the west, there's uh, a mobile home park there, CM30, uh, 35, I believe, there. There's, there's a lot of multifamily in there. We believe it's consistent. We believe it's consistent with the neighborhood, and we believe that we're in line with the goals that you guys have set for the Planning Commission, which they've come back in their report to say yes, and that's why the board unanimously voted for it. Thank you for your time and consideration. Thank you. Is there anyone in council chambers wishing to speak to agenda item number three, TA CPA 22-17? I do not believe we have anybody online. We'll close. Second. We have a motion to close by Councilman Goose, seconded by Councilman Amanda Scott. All in favor? Aye. Thank you very much. Councilman Goose. What members said for first reading consideration? I know that amending the magic 24, the Temple Government Plan, future land use element, future land use map for a property located at 701 East Limbo Avenue for residential 10 R10 to residential 20 R20, providing for appeal ordinance and conflict, providing for a certain relief, providing effective date. Second. We have a motion made by Councilman Goods, seconded by Councilman Maniscalco. Any further discussion? Councilwoman Hertak. Um, I'm also going to deny this one um, only because right now what's all around it is R10. I mean, it's, it's everything around it. And right now they could build five townhomes. And I think that for wh what that, the land use is right now is perfectly appropriate. I think putting 10 would drastically change the neighborhood. And yes, we need more density, but we need to do it smartly and in areas and in ways in which fits with the, with the neighborhood and moving slowly toward what we want to see. F um, adding five homes here would be great. I think that would be adding the density, but 10 is quite honestly too much for this area in my opinion, so I'll be voting no. Any other further discussion? <coughs> Roll call vote. Vieira? No. Maniscalco? Miranda? No. Hertek? No. Carlson? No. Goulds? I read the motion, so I have to say yes to what Mr. Martin asserts. That's why I said okay. it. That's correct. That's why I said it means I knew that was going to work. Um, if I say yes. Okay. Citro? No. Okay. 
Motion did not pass. In a quasi judicial, yes. I believe, for the sake of um, the record, why don't we just make a motion to deny? That'll be fine. Yes, please. Mr. Chairman? Councilman Menescalco. Thank you very much. I uh, move to deny file number <coughs> TACPA 22 17, and that is the ordinance amending the Imagine 2040 Tampa Comprehensive Plan for Future Land Use Element. Future land use map for the property located at 701 East Line Ball Avenue from residential R10 to R10 residential 20, providing for repeal of all ordinances in conflict, providing severability prior to an effective date. You, that. you know, that part is just the motion to deny. Oh, okay. Well, and and yeah. again, uh, if you wish to state the reasons or you can adopt okay. the uh, reasoning of Ms. Hertz. Who is going to second this wish. motion? Second. We have a motion made by Councilman Maniscalco, seconded by Councilwoman Hertak. Is there any further discussion? Roll call vote. Goods. Vieira? Yes. Maniscalco? Yes. Miranda? Yes. Hertak? Yes. Carlson? Yes. Citro? Yes. Okay, motion passed. The vote, please. Yes. Well, you'd have to say who expect, but somebody was absent. It was Yes. Um, Goods was absent at vote. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, agenda item number four, TA CPA 22 18. Jennifer Malone with your Planning Commission staff. This is at 803 West Linebaugh Avenue. It is privately initiated, small scale. It's also a half acre site, and the request before you is from residential 10 to residential 20. It's in the University Planning District in the East Forest Hills neighborhood. Here's the subject site outlined. As you can see, it's on the northern portion of West Linebaugh Avenue. We have North Boulevard over here, North Ola Avenue. We have a church right here um, and some other churches and multifamily use development in the surrounding area. And to the north is the Danny Del Rio Pool. This is the subject site at 803 West Linebaugh Avenue. We are facing west along Linebaugh Avenue. The subject site was to the east of the a photographer or to the <coughs> sorry it's, it's on this side of the screen <laughs> so this is facing north along the eastern border of the subject site it's kind of over here facing east along the southern border of the subject site and then here's the adopted future land use map this uh, corridor might look familiar to you because this parcel right next door uh, came in for the same request a couple years ago in front of this council from residential 10 to residential 20. Um, we have residential 10 as the subject site, residential 10 here, but then we have residential 20 to the south. And this is a, a multifamily development right here. And then the Danny Del Rio pool right here is recreational open space, which actually came before you as part of your parks, one of your parks plan amendments in that series. And then here's the proposed future land use map recognizing that residential 20 continuing along West Lineball Avenue. So the planning commission, oh, so the impacts that would go from five to 10 dwelling units, the amount of non-residential would increase a little bit, but the site would still be required to meet locational criteria for any non-residential use. Because it is a residential land use category, it's very limited if you wanna do some non-residential, it's, it's very controlled. So this is consistent with the plan policies. The Planning Commission found the protection of the promotion of infill development. Um, the plan promotes infill on a vacant or underutilized land to keep providing housing for Tampa's growing population. And the Planning Commission also found that this would provide a sensitive transition in density from that um, residential 10 to the north. Um, the, the plan supports putting that density along your corridors and West Line by Avenue is, is a corridor or that, that density, yes. And the location of multifamily areas, it also supports placing more where there's already some existing. We already have that residential 20 next door and across the street and that development pattern. The Planning Commission recommends that the proposed map amendment, amendment be found consistent with the goals, objectives, and policies of the plan. I did not have a slide for uh, City of Tampa staff comments because there was no objection to this one from the City of Tampa staff. And Stephen Benson's here to answer any questions on that. Any questions? Thank you. 
Any questions for Mr. Benson? Petitioner. Good evening, again. Um, we ask your support on this. Um, this parcel, the adjacent parcel, we came before this board uh, previously and, and got it changed. We also came before this board with the PD project of eight townhome units that we're building over there. We were able to work out a deal with the church and was able to acquire the next piece of property. So we would like your support to continue on what we're do currently doing that, that you guys found consistent previously, and that is um, consistent with what the city is looking for in development patterns. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions for the petitioner? No, sir. Is there anyone in chambers that wishes to speak to agenda item number four, file number TACPA 22-18? Seeing none, do we have anyone online? We have a motion to close by Councilman Maniscalco, seconded by Councilman Miranda. All in favor? Aye. Any further discussion? No, sir. Councilman Miranda. Order is being presented for first reading consideration in order amending the image 2040 comprehensive plan future land use element, future land use map for the property located 803 West Lineball Avenue, residential R10, R10 to residential 20, R20, providing repeatable ordinance and conflict, providing for shareability, Second. providing an effective date. We have a motion by Councilman Miranda, seconded by Councilman Maniscalco. Any further discussion? Councilwoman Hurtak. And I just want to say this one fits really well because it has the R20 already next door and right next to it. So we're just continuing. And this is where we see the development pattern changing. So I will support this. Any other further discussion? Roll call vote. Maniscalco? Yes. Miranda? Yes. Hurtak? Yes. Carlson? Yes. Goods? Yes. Vieira? Yes. Citro? Yes. Yes. Motion carried unanimously. Second reading and adoption will be held on February 16, 2023 at 9.30 a.m. Thank you, Council, for tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Agenda item number five, file number TACPA 22-19. Good evening, St. Thomas with your uh, Planning Commission staff. This is TACPA 2219, located at 2302 and 2304 North Boulevard. Some background on this request. It was privately initiated. It's small scale in size, approximately 0 0.34 acres, and the request is to go from the residential 10 to the residential 20 designation. Here's the site on our general locator map. It's in the central Tampa Planning District, the Ridgewood Park neighborhood. Here's an aerial map of the subject site. You can see the subject site highlighted in yellow. It's at the intersection of West Park Avenue and North Boulevard. On the east side of North Boulevard, the development pattern is mainly single family detached. Um, on, the, on, the west, uh, on the east side of North Boulevard, the development pattern switches to a multi mix of multifamily, single family attached, and single family detached. Um, as you go up north to the intersection of Columbus um, Drive and North Boulevard, you have a mix of some like commercial uses and single family attached or detached up there. Um, and then as you go south um, of Ross Avenue, you get into the Heights um, mixed use development. You can see the Pearl, um, the Pearl Apartment Complex in your corner. And then further over to the west, you can see the Hillsborough River in the corner. This is looking north along North Boulevard. The subject site is on the left side of the frame. This is looking south on North Boulevard and the subject site is on the right side of the frame. This is looking north from West Park Avenue at the subject site. And this is looking west at the subject site from North Boulevard. Here is the adopted future land use map. Um, you can see the site here recognized under the residential 10. Um, you can see residential 10 is pretty dominant in the Richard Park neighborhood. Um, when you go south, there is some R35. And then when you cross North Boulevard to the east, you can see that it's all recognized under the R35. Um, south of Palm Avenue, there's some of the RMU 100. Um, and then north of that intersection where that light commercial uses are is the community mixed use 35. Um, I would like to point out this site here at the corner of North Boulevard and West Columbus that came before you guys not too long ago. Um, it was TACPA 2211, and that request um, isn't reflected on this map. That request changed this parcel up here entirely to community mixed use 35, and it changed the two southern parcels to residential 35. 
And here is a proposed future land use map. Um, you can see the site recognized under the R20. Um, I would also like to mention that I believe this came in for a plan, this actually did come in for a plan, I believe, in 2021 to move the site to R20 as well. Um, the potential impacts of this request, currently on the R10, the site can be considered for three units. With the residential 20, the site can be considered for six units. Um, there is um, a possibility to do um, non-residential uses on the site, um, but they do have to meet locational criteria and some other conditions for that. Um, but overall, it, you would increase the density and intensity on the site, um, and it introduces the possibility of RM12, RM16, RM18, and the R01 zoning. Um, the city staff did have an objection to this request, and I'll let them speak on that. Um, the Planning Commission did find this consistent with multiple objectives and policies of the comprehensive plan, such as using limited land resources to finish this efficiently enough to designate housing options to meet the needs of Tampa's growing population. And additionally, to promote development patterns consistent with the compact city strategy form, which is encourages infill development within proximity to transit and employment services. Based on those considerations, the Planning Commission recommends that the proposed MAP amendment be found consistent with the goals and objectives of the Tampa Comprehensive Plan. I'm available for any questions. Any questions for staff? Stephen Benson, City Planning. This objection also originated from Land Development Coordination. And the uh, explanation for the objection is that the R20 category would double the allowable density on this site and allow for the introduction of multifamily uses within a single family area. So uh, the potential maximum development potential would be six units, and that would likely come before you as a PD. But at that point, they're allowed to have the six units because you would have already approved it here today as part of this plan amendment. So that's what staff objection, that's what staff's objection was based on. That's one hurt that. Um, if we could get the map, um, the um, colored, it, it doesn't matter which one, um, the future land use map, um, because I have a question for Mr. Benson. While we do often see that changing a residential, well, okay, let's just start over. So we have R35 on one side of the street and R10 on the other side of the street. Wouldn't R20 be a good buffer between those two, especially on a major corridor like North Boulevard? There, there are policies that you could cite that I think have already been cited that would support that determination. Um, however, if that were the case, then everything on North Boulevard on the west side would already be R20. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Then, Mr. Besson, following that line and, and thinking of a transition, when was the right side? How long has that been designated that? Has that been changed over in the last 10 years, 20 years? The east side yeah. of, of Boulevard. Okay. Um, I'd That's have to, Jennifer Malone, Planning Commission staff, I'd have to look at the old maps. It's hard to say, but I will say part of the reason why it is so different is because the east side of North Boulevard is the Tampa Heights urban village. And so the plan directs the greatest share of growth for our urban villages. There's a little bit of a different development pattern. And then the west side of North Boulevard is not part of the urban village. So I can only imagine that when the planners were drawing the map a long time ago that's probably why they they placed such a higher density across the street i must ask when you say a long time ago well, <laughs> <laughs> were you born before um, that time <laughs> i played the fifth oh, no. <laughs> um, but the first land use map was uh, a 1989 time frame oh, so that long ago huh? yes and i can't I, say definitively if it's always been r35 but i've looked at a lot of these over the years, and um, if there wasn't a big plan amendment, it, it, it yeah, it, it might have been that way. I haven't heard the petitioner. I'm, I'm not, excuse me, making judgments, but at some point we're going to have to take a step down before going into a residential neighborhood. Uh, enough said for me. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Thank you, petitioner. 
Good evening, my name is Angela Halber with Hillward Henderson, 101 East Kennedy Boulevard, and I'm here for the petitioner professional lead group. Um, actually, you can leave that up there because <laughs> this map is pretty much illustrates why we're here tonight. Um, this, there is no transition currently between the R35 and the R10 and there is no such thing as R15. <laughs> um, the applicant is hoping to do four units and actually has a, a plan development application in for rezoning that's a companion. Of course, it's all dependent on this being approved. Currently, there are three. They can get three units on this and they want four. So again, this is, um, the other part of this is that all of these lots currently front on North Boulevard, which is an arterial, and the, the site to the south is completely vacant. The lot to the north is um, it's currently vacant. It, there's a structure there, but it needs to be demolished, and we have an application pending review for that. So um, again, we've got the proposal to do R20, and create that buffer between the, the sensitive transition. The comprehensive plan contains the policies that support this. This is a gentle nudge that increases the density um, between these two areas, which is consistent with the comprehensive plan, but it also maintains the stability of the Ridgewood Park neighborhood to the east. Um, and that's pretty much why we're here. If you have any questions, please let me know. Any questions for the petitioner? Is there anyone in chambers who wishes to speak to agenda item number five, TACPA 22-19? Seeing none, do we have anyone online? Second. We have a motion to close from Councilman Maniscalco, seconded by Councilman Miranda. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Councilman Miranda. I just had one. Yes, you did. You're, you're correct. Councilman <laughs> Carlson. I'd like to move uh, file number TACPA 22-19 ordinance being presented for first reading consideration and ordinance amending the Imagine 2040 Tampa Comprehensive Plan future land use element, future land use map for the property located at 2302 and 2304 North Boulevard from residential 10 R10 to residential 20 R20 providing for repeal of all ordinances and conflict provided for severability finding effective date. Second. We have a motion made by Councilman Carlson, seconded by Councilman Councilwoman Hurtak. Any further discussion? Councilwoman Hurtak. Um, yes, uh, since we're just having discussions tonight, um, maybe I'm the only one, but anyway, uh, I, I really do think that the, that step is appropriate and probably needed along North Boulevard. So um, I think this helps bring that along. And uh, if I may, Council, I, uh, I couldn't agree with you more. This is one of those areas where a transition is going to be needed. It wouldn't be higher density and then single family. This would gently ease in. So I agree with you. Any other further discussion? I, I'm not going to be supportive. I've uh, I looked at this and I know it's needed, but it was needed everywhere else. And we, but anyway, it's just my feeling. Don't worry about it. Any other further discussion? Roll call vote. Miranda. No. Hurtek. Yes. Carlson. Yes. Goulds? No. Vieira? Yes. Maniscalco? No. Citro? Yes. Motion passed with Miranda, Goulds, Maniscalco voting no. Wait a minute. Second reading and adoption will be held on February 16, 2023 at 9.30 a.m. I'm There's sorry. There's something wrong there. I, I, I need, let's, let's have a... I Councilman Mescago. Can I just go back? Councilman Vieira, what was your vote? Yes. It was a yes. Okay. Yes, sir. All right. I, I missed that one. Yes. Okay. I, I you know, I, I just want to make yeah, no, sure. I, I understand. Mr. Please Chairman, continue, understand. Madam, uh, Madam Clerk. Okay. Um, second reading and adoption will be held on February 16, 2023 at 930 a.m. Thank you. Send item number seven. 
File number TACPA 22 22. Emily Phelan, Planning Commission staff. This is TACPA 2222, located at 101 West Amelia Avenue, 2500 and 2510 North Tampa Street, 106, 108, 110, and 114 West Columbus Drive. This is privately initiated small scale. It's approximately 1.38 acres, and the request is to go from Community Commercial 35 and community mixed use 35 to urban mixed use 60. This is the general location map. The subject site is down here. It's in the central Tampa Planning District, the Tampa Heights Urban Village, and the Tampa Heights neighborhood. Uh, this is the aerial of the site. You can see the subject site outlined in red and it fronts West Columbus Avenue and it's bound by North Highland Avenue and North Tampa Street. And the area around the site mainly consists of commercial uses and single family detached. This is facing south on North Tampa Street looking at the subject site. This is facing north on North, Tam on North Tampa Street and the subject site is on the left. This is facing west on West Columbus Drive. The subject site is also on the left. This is facing east on West Columbus Drive. The subject site is on the right. This is facing east on West Columbus Drive and the subject site is on the right. And facing north on Highland Avenue and the subject site is to the right. This is the adopted future land use map. You can see the subject site outlined here in black. The red is the com community commercial 35 and the pink is the uh, community mixed use 35. You can see along um, Columbus, you can see the transitions between the community commercial 35 and the CMU 35 as well. And further to the north and south are the residential designations. This is the proposed future land use map. The subject site is aligned here. It's hard to tell the difference between the colors, but it is the urban mixed use 60. Um, existing impacts of the site, it can currently have 47 dwelling units on it. And with a UMU 60 designation, it would be allowed to have 82 dwelling units. And the square footage of the residential and or non-residential uses would also be increased. Um, the urban mixed use 60 designation will expand the commercial intensive uses on over the entire site. Currently, they are only allowed in the CC 35 designation of the site. The city of Tampa had objections to this. The planning commission found it consistent with multiple aspects of the comprehensive plan. Uh, the, the comprehensive plan has policy direction that identifies the need to designate enough land for housing options to meet the needs of Tampa's growing population and consider the development of mixed use areas that can accommodate local serving commercial employment and entertainment uses. The comprehensive plan promotes a development pattern consistent with the compact city form strategy which encourages mixed use infill development within the proximity to transit and employment services. And the comprehensive plan also seeks to direct the greatest share of growth to the urban villages. The Planning Commission recommended that the proposed map amendment be found consistent with the goals, objectives, and policies of the Tampa Comprehensive Plan. This is the end of my presentation. If you have any questions. Any questions for staff? Stephen Benson, City Planning. Uh, this objection also came out of uh, land, de land development coordination staff and the rationale was that this would introduce the commercial intensive uses which don't uh, currently exist further along Columbus Drive. Those commercial intensive uses, so the allowed uses that could be asked for, um, include uh, the, this, the same list that was talked about in the prior case. It's going to be auto repair and auto shops and that, those types of uses. Um, additionally, we wanted to point out that 
There is a policy in the plan that allows you to use floor area ratio and not density. So we've seen some cases come before you where you've asked, well, how can they get that amount of density? You know, if you multiply the density by the acreage, it's a lot lower. It's because in the planning districts that are designated for growth in the plan, you can use floor area ratio if it's a mixed use category. And you can fit a lot more units if you use the floor area ratio. It's something built into the plan already that a lot of people know about, some people don't know about, but it is an option. So using 1,000 square feet per unit as a general assumption, which is what's consistent with past cases, you could get up to 100, 195 dwelling units or 195,000 square feet of development on the site. Last thing that I want to mention is there was a study completed by Hart that was tied to the bus rapid transit going up and down Florida and Tampa. That study recommended and it identified a need for higher density on the corridor. So that has been out there in the community. It came from feedback. Um, that recommendation has not been implemented in the plan. We're going to try to implement it as part of the plan update. Um, but that is also a rational basis to potentially approve the amendment. I just want to offer that on the record. Thank you. Councilwoman Hurtak. Can you clarify that? So what, what you're saying is that there's a, there's a thought to already Im increase this density? that was related to the bus rapid transit that was proposed okay. to go from downtown to USF. There would have been a station here as part of that study. The recommendation was to increase the, uh, increase the lane use. Yes. And what would that possibly have been? This would have been the next to? bump up. This is the next to bump up. UMU to UMU 60? Because you're already at, you're already at uh, CMU, let's see. You're already at CMU and CC. Yes. That's, uh, there's nothing in between. OK. So I think my question is, why don't we have something in between because it seems like we have either community commercial or community mixed use which is which makes a lot of sense it, to me it's residential it's it's retail it's all of that stuff and then you come to urban mixed use, so use 60 which can have like heavy duty um, commercial intensive uses and that so there's there's so you're saying that there's really nothing else, else you can do to get that density except use far. Okay, thank you. Which is allowed for mixed use, yes. Okay, so they could get, uh, in theory, they could get the same thing with the community mixed use, but by using far. Not the same density. It no. would be, it oh, would be okay. much less, because CMU and CC cap, cap out at two, and UMU is, let's see, 3.25. And they don't have to Correct, correct, yeah. Could and you repeat whatever she said? Correct. And you don't have to use mixed use if you're in Central Tampa, West Shore, or the University District. You can just use FAR and put all units in there. And no no retail. No, I don't know that that's what's going to happen, but that's what would be allowed. Okay. But, but you're saying, I mean, possibly when we're looking at this future planning maps, that we could find something that might fit this we, we can look at that better? as part of the plan update. We would be okay, happy to there do that. is something that you want to look at the, that would not include heavy industrial. The, there is not, but it's a consideration we okay, can take back Okay, thank you. That's all I wanted update. to know. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Any other questions to staff? Petition. Council Alex Shaler, 400 North Ashley Drive, for the record. I'm here with TACPA 2222. Um, I think you all are pretty familiar with where this was located. I'll keep it relatively brief, but at the intersection of Tampa and Columbus, which I'll, I'll detail a little bit more on those roadways in a couple different slides. Um, the request CC35, CMU35 to UMU60, those maps are shown on the screen. And this is a comparison of the FAR that was briefly mentioned before. So right now, uh, baseline FAR is one for CC and CMU35. UMU 60 would bump that up to 2.5, and then as you can see, the next line with bonus, it would be going from a 2 to an allowable 3.25 FAR. As mentioned, um, a little bit more about these roadways. So Tampa Street and Columbus Drive, and this is this is relatively our justification for the request, both of them are arterial roadways. So the site's going to be fronting um, two arterial roadways at a major intersection there in Tampa Heights. 
Um, West Columbus Drive is a transit emphasis corridor as designated in the comp plan. Um, and these transit emphasis corridors are suitable for redevelopment and higher density uses than currently they are today. Um, I would also like to mention that one of the factors in reviewing a comp plan amendment um, is whether it is located on a transit emphasis corridor. So that's something that is considered um, for higher density comp plan amendments. And then as mentioned as well, it is located fully in the Tampa Heights urban village and there are a plethora of policies in the comp plan um, regarding the direction of growth to these areas of the city. Um, staff recommended this application um, or found this application consistent. And then we went before the planning commission on November 7th of last year and received a unanimous recommendation of consistency as well on this application. And I am available for questions, and I do have some support letters that I don't think made it into the record yet um, from the YMCA yes. and a couple other people. Can you give them to yep. Ms. Shelby uh, a motion to receive and file by Councilman Maniscalco, seconded by Councilman Carlson. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. Motion passes. Any questions for the petitioner? One second to take a look at these, please. Of course. Get my bearing. That whole area that you're looking at there on, on uh, Columbus Drive, that's all vacant, isn't it? Um, the Gold Ring Cafe is there. At the yep. corner. Right at the corner. Uh, and then you have the other house at the end. Yes. Big old house. Mm -hmm. Looks like a ghost house, but it's been there for 100 years. <laughs> <coughs> Any questions for the petitioner? Seeing no questions for the petition, let's go to public comment. Is there anybody in council chambers that would like to make comment to agenda item number eight, TACPA 22-23? Can you ask to line up to, the, to your right, to your left? I, you know, there's so many. I, this, all right, I, I see that we may have two online. Good evening, Chair. The two that is registered are not um, online at this time. We have a motion closed by Councilman Maniscalco, seconded by Councilman Goods. All in favor say aye. Aye. And who do we have here? Is this Councilman Maniscalco? Yes, sir. Thank you. I have an ordinance being presented for first reading consideration an ordinance amending the Imagine 2040 Tampa contra Comprehensive Plan, future land use element, future land use map for the property located at 101 West Amelia Avenue, 2500 and 2510 North Tampa Street and 106, 108, 110 and 114 West Columbus Drive from the Community Commercial 35 CC 35 and Community Mixed Use. 35 CMU 35 to urban mixed use 60 UMU 60 providing for repeal of all ordinances in Second. conflict providing for severability providing an effective day. We have a motion made by Councilman Maniscalco seconded by Councilman Miranda. Any further discussion? Roll call vote. Hertek? Yes. Carlson? Yes. Goulds? Yes. Vieira? Yes. Maniscalco? Yes. Miranda? Yes. Citro? Yes. Motion carried unanimously. Second reading and adoption will be held February 16, 2023 at 9.30 a.m. Thank you. Information reports. Councilman Miranda. None, sir. Councilman Goods. Yes. Councilman Hurtak. None. Councilman Carlson. Yes. Councilman Maniscalco. Yes, first, a, uh, this is very important, a happy belated birthday to Councilmember Vieira. Thank and, you. Uh, and Neil Diamond as well. I don't know if they have the same birthday, but <laughs> he was the other day. And now I have a motion. This is a request by the Planning Commission in coordination with the city's planning department. <laughs> well, you, you don't like that? 
Yeah, no, I, I just find it funny. I saw Neil Diamond twice in Tampa. That, one of the best shows I've ever seen. Anyways, a request by the Planning Commission in coordination with the city's plan, planning department to appear and present before City Council on February 23, sorry, February 23rd, 2023 at 9 a.m. to present an update on the future land use assessment with Pritchett Steinbeck Group. We have a motion made by Councilman uh, Maniscalco, seconded by Councilman Goods. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Councilman Vieira. Uh, yes, sir. Just really quick, if I may. Um, I'd mentioned before regarding the Veterans Parks, and I'm glad the city is going forward with that. I wanted to get an update on that. If, if, what's the furthest that I can schedule? Marty said whenever you want. Oh, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'll, I'll do it in the, what are we in? In the uh, first first week of October of 2020, what are we in? 23, uh, just on the status of the veterans parks throughout the city of Tampa, or memorials throughout the city of Tampa, if I may. October 5th on the staff reports? That's a good day. Yes, sir. Thank you. Second. We have a motion made by Councilman Vieira, seconded by Councilman Carlson. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And then second, and thank you, Council. Second, if I may, Angela Alderman, who some of y'all may know, uh, was the nice young woman who uh, led up the um, uh, memorial for the College Hill Cemetery. I wanted to give her a city council commendation at our April 2023 um, commendation second. meeting, if I may. We have a motion made by Councilman Vieira, seconded by Councilman Maniscalco. All in favor? Aye. And that's it. Thank you, Council. Yes. Thank you very much, Council. I move to request a five-minute presentation from the Florida Department of Transportation about their onboard Tampa Bay at the February 16th regular session at 9 a.m. Presentations and ceremonies. We have a mo motion from the Chairman, second from Councilmember Carlson. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Move to receive and follow. I'll move. Motion is received and followed by Councilman Mascot, seconded by Councilmember Rand. All in favor? Aye. Without objection, we are adjourned.